it's, it's so much fun watching everyone roll in here, honestly. Um, it's, uh, it's, it, I, I'm a very small streamer normally, right? Like, so I, I only have like a couple dozen, like maybe, maybe a couple followers here and there. And I really appreciate everyone who follows me on Twitch. I really don't stream there enough to justify it, but, <laughs> um, it is, it is something that I, uh, I, I do enjoy seeing folks follow and whatnot, but it is it's it's a trip to watch like you know hundreds of people start rolling in you know what i mean like that's 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 awesome um thank you all for coming and um it is feel free to uh to chat in the vc chat um that is just above the stage one here so we will be creating inside of vc create so that whenever i'm generating stuff i'll be generating in there and if you want to talk to me and show up on the stream, um, you use the VC chat, or sorry, VC text, sorry. V and that's at the top of the voice channels here. So, uh, hi, <laughs> my name is uh, Victor, and I am the, I guess the character continuity guy <laughs> that, that gets thrown on on stage here every week. Um, then I'll be uh, I'll, I'm I'm excited to be able to kind of go through filmmaking with you guys today. Um, for for me anyway, uh, as I start you know get this day started here, I do actually have to kind of start this stream to address something publicly. But the thing I need to address with uh, with everyone here, and this is mostly because this is a recorded stream, it's public and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I did a, a collab with a traditional artist um, on Reddit, actually. Uh, and I'll pull that up here really quick because this is, this is kind of um, important to address in terms of the, the kind of reaction we got from this. But essentially what I did for the comic was she, she wanted to do a joke about you know, AI hands and all that kind of stuff. But she she's aware of the situation. She knows that Mid Journey version five and, and Sable Diffusion and whatnot are more than capable of outputting perfectly fine hands. Um and, you know, when when she originally, you know, reached out to me about it, you know, she was gonna do it herself. And I instantly saw that a popular artist like her trying to make this joke was going to land her in some super hot water because she would have had to generate all the stuff herself. And uh, I don't know if just like my big brother mode kicked in or something like that, but like I needed to, I, I, I needed to step in and I, I was like, look, I'm more than happy. I, in fact, I really want to generate this stuff for you. Um, and we can do this as a collab, you know, and I just, I just want you to know that uh, I would, I would rather do it than, than, didn't see you do it and she uh and you know she was very happy and appreciative that i jumped on and stuff but I'll, I'll show the comic here first uh this is anime 4k um she is uh an amazing up-and-coming artist uh she, she I, I, you know she's she's probably got a pro well i probably got a good 12 to 15 years on her i don't know how old she is but she's she's young and up and coming and she made this you know funny little joke about you know about the hands being AI generated and they look like photographs, you know, they don't look generated at all. They don't, they don't have messed up fingers and all that stuff. And in fact, the, the last panel here, uh, they, they, I used a chiaroscuro prompt in order to make the kind of uh, intense anime lighting that was on the realistic hands. So, um, you know, it, it, it does take some, some knowledge of like, you know, form and, and, and method to be able to, really control the images enough to make a joke like this honestly because like you you need to like the, the generations it took it took 32 different runs in order for me to get get all the hands i needed on here so um but the thing is is that this comic uh blew up uh she she's a very popular artist so it, it, it there's close to like 12 and a half thousand views so like you're, you're you know and in terms of the actual numbers here she you knows she she could be she could be a half million plus in terms of viewership of just this post alone, right? Well, what what happened after this was a public boycott of me. Um, about um, a handful of the traditional artists got got very very loud 
about uh about my involvement in this um i i'm i am a known name on the subreddit for being the quote unquote ai guy even though there's a couple of us by the way you, you're if you if you put some real effort behind your comics you're more than welcome to post onto r comics uh and feature generated material but uh they didn't think so and there was a lot of people who you know agreed with them but they were not in the majority and i think the thing that they were most shocked with was seeing everybody talking about AI generated stuff without the hate, without all the frustration and anger and worries about ethics and everything else. None of that, almost none of that is inside of this thread from y'all. And I know that there's a couple mid journey users that are scattered in here that are kind of keeping the tone pretty positive, you know? But the 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 reality is is that the uh, the artist got real 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 scared uh seeing so many people uh being all down for it and anime is a is a uh is an artist who frankly um you know is is in is in representation of a much younger generation which for the older folks that are you know that have been, you know they might have been have seen some whiplash let's just put it like that uh whiplash to to uh to see so many people talking positive about a generated image right um and my little addition for this which i'm gonna kind of throw up here really quick um my part of the collab here which you can tell is not the highest thing in the thread by the way it's 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 i'm not surprised by that uh, also um uh but i'll mute myself again here this was my part of the collab where outside of the generated stuff this was my my comic where she actually drew um, some fan art for me and it's kind of hard to see inside of here, but basically uh, her fan art is the little rat punk that's sitting on the tablet screen here. So that's pretty fun. But um, this was the first time that I made a spec sheet for myself, basically saying, Hey, I use uh, mid journey Pika labs, Adobe suite. So that includes Photoshop um, character animator and after effects. Uh, these are my three primary programs. I mess with plenty of others, but that's 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 really where most of the meat of what I what I use. And um, I think I think that the combination of seeing Mid Journey, you know, on here, no one's complaining about Mid Journey, uh, really spooked a couple people. Um, but then there's one other part that um, that I need to address here too, which is this. Um, I made an animated, um, basically like timeline, that I've done timeline, like a, an animated um, infographic that shows you how I made her. Uh, and I did it entirely with what is called injected in painting, where um, I am using her character turnaround. So her original art, her original sketches, I am using as a reference for Mid Journey. Uh, I'm going to let it play here one more time. So whenever you see, uh, anime 4K spinning around, that is me saying, oh yeah, I'm including her reference art whenever I'm injecting there. Um, and so, you know, I, I animated this, I had a lot of fun with it and stuff, but it's very fast, and especially the time to do drawing stuff where it's like I blink and it's there. You know, I'm kind of leaning into the joke a little bit here, but like that, I think that didn't help. <laughs> I don't think that helped at all when it came to the uh, the reception of that. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, I'll, I'll say this: um, the the top comment to my response here was someone saying, "You have a mid PC," and I I just had to give this this gif response here because it's so accurate to how I felt when I saw that. I was I was just like, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there was a lot of really fun discussions that were happening here, but I'm not going to get into the details about, you know, any specific artists at all. Um, I don't think that's fair to them at all. Uh, if I really start getting into, you know, individual arguments, I will not get into the mod discussion, you know, where the mods were like, all right, y'all, you got to stop harassing this guy. Um, the it's, it's, we allow generative stuff here. That's not going to change. Um, we might add a label, but otherwise, um, no, that's nothing. We're not going to suddenly kick out a, you know, somebody because they got too popular. Um, 
I, 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 I will say that one of the reasons why it got nasty wasn't just because, you know, 4K uh, and I did a collab. It was, um, it was also because of, and I'll switch myself over to the couch here real quick. And then I promise we're getting into filmmaking, guys. I just promised that um, it ended up with me getting harassed super bad. Um, a, bu a, bunch of, a bunch of people felt inclined to parrot their idols and try to message me or reach out to me or wake me up when I'm sleeping or do a bunch of other crap. Um, things like that. That that that's where I was like, okay, uh, this is this is uh, this is getting ridiculous now. Um, and I I personally, you know, I I've I I just I need to be very careful with my words here because like it's it no no individual art, artist doxed me, no no individual artist did at all. But I did I did just want to like kind of emphasize here that like I can tell when certain people do certain things because it like it's a reaction it's an immediate reaction to their own behavior so if they leave a nasty comment to me or they try to talk sarcastically to me um their audience sees that you know and they parrot it parrot uh, sorry they parrot it in a way that is um so much more nastier and with intent by the way like the the, the a couple of these creatives know how big their audiences are and if they leave a comment on something their audience is going to notice you know so, yeah so um I'll, I'll i'll pull this up here real quick yeah yeah and i see there's a comment here about what happened i i i'm a i am a cartoonist um and filmmaker um within mid journey like that's i prefer using generative stuff for storyboarding and all that kind of stuff but i also make comics and just just to kind of answer that question real quick here um this is the comic that I'll, I'll mute myself here real quick. Uh, I was actually quite proud of this comic. Um, it features my wife's self-insert, self, self insert, uh, Sage. And um, I, it might be a little tough for you guys to see, I know, uh, in the stream. But um, this was me celebrating 500 followers. Just 500. Like, it, like, understand, the artists that were upset at me were... Let me try to zoom in here the best I can. There you go. Um, the artists that were upset with me have, you know, 10 to a hundred times that number. Um, and because I made a celebration post for it, I had this silly little joke here. Um, they, uh, you know, that a couple of them were, were surprised that people actually paid attention to the stuff I was making, let alone wanted to see more of it. So they know that everything gets consumed in a couple seconds, right? Like when you're scrolling through a Reddit feed, you know, when you're when you're scrolling through all this content, you're 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 on you're on the pooper. You're doing something. You're doing something else. Uh, and um, I'll I'll I, you know, they know that you have only a couple seconds to pay attention to things. So they don't they know that the average general public is not going to notice the small details in generative imagery, especially if it's really good stuff. Right. Like if I, if you're making comics that otherwise like can't be can't be told that it's generated or not you're going to um you know like you you might never get seen in that way uh i mean or you not or at least never get noticed to what medium you're using as long as you're like prompting specific things like minimalism or whatever but um they they they're fully aware that um you know generative tech will change the landscape when it comes to um the consumption of media and uh yeah seeing any kind of normalization or crossover quote unquote crossovers is really it can be really jarring for them um so yeah yeah um let's see here uh i'm just gonna check out the comments here really quick yeah thank you thank you about the animation marin i i i, I will say this when it comes to the the animation and stuff i i i i really think in painting is like my solution for getting into traditional animation now, honestly. Um, and I say traditional as in like, I'm not, I'm not doing what I was doing for my uh, tutorials. Um, so I'll, I'll pull that up here really quick. So on my website, uh, Victor Gnarly, um, you can go to movie machine up here 
and movie machine is it's not like uh, there's also another misconception which is like this is they some people think that i like own an ai company because of this page you know what i mean like like I'm st- I, I guess I'm trying to start a film studio or a production house or something like that. But Movie Machine is actually just a tutorial. Um, I'll beat myself again here. Movie Machine is a tutorial that teaches you about AI filmmaking, um, particularly both in animation and live action. But you need to know filmmaking in order to do what I'm doing in this tutorial. As in, like, the better you are at making a movie or making a short film, the better you are at, at 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 doing what I'm doing here, and this was all made in Mid Journey originally, like generated images in Mid Journey, even the animation of the girl running out of the church. Um, but you know, I'm using traditional tools to lock the background, to create a 3D camera, to move things around, to make adjustments, especially color correction. Um, but in this tutorial, and uh, and feel free to link it, Kinky, if you don't mind. Um, the it in the tutorial is is kind of like a big big cheat sheet of everything that I want to talk to you guys about, uh, and I'll turn myself on here. Okay, um, yeah. In in the tutorial here is basically a cheat sheet for every workshop, everything that we're gonna be doing uh, together. Not today. Uh, in my previous streams on my YouTube channel and stuff, you can catch those. But uh, in my previous streams, we focused on the original character creation. You know, um, and uh, in fact, I'll just move this over here for now. Yeah, like that. Um, so I focused on character creation for my initial stream, um, you know, character continuity, particularly where we are able to essentially retain the same character in multiple prompts. And this is all done uh, by using what is called a character sheet or a character turnaround like you're seeing here. We eventually get some action poses out of it and then inject those in. And injecting is essentially you hit variation subtle, right? And then you put URLs ahead of a word only prompt. And that will, um, as long as the URLs kind of match in form, like I'm going from this turnaround here to injecting into these uh, running poses, and I'm getting a very similar result, basically a combination of the two. Where where whatever is in the front of your prompt, like the URL wise, is so powerful that it's able to influence the uh, the final product till we get a complete turnaround like this, and I clean that up to look like this, and that gets us all of our poses and keyframes and everything like that. Um, and then I will get into uh, the filmmaking side, but the the thing is is that once you have a continuous character, you'll be able to um, write slash prefer it's the only thing that's not in the tutorial right now is the slash prefer stuff i've just been busy um but if you and i'll show this really quick here inside of discord here inside of any uh with wherever the mid journey bot is so it could be on your private discord could be the dms it could be on another server you know it doesn't really it'll, it'll save to your account okay so what you do is you hit slash prefer um and What's going to happen is it gives you, there's an option way at the top. It says option prefer set. And if you do have a bunch of URLs ready to go for this, you can just save your character, basically, doing slash prefer. So you could see I have a bunch of characters, uh, including Ancient. Uh, and I got to make one for Kinky, actually. I haven't really figured out exactly what, we, like, I feel like we need to collab on one. That would be fun. Um, and, and, and get like a live action version of kinky for this one, uh, because I do, yeah, I think that, well, that was how I was kind of thinking it when, when, when my third stream had a corruption and, and I had to recreate a good amount of the footage for it. I, I used your, um, you know, your, your, uh, the, uh, the peak of video that you had sent me. Um, yeah, yeah. Ver- yeah sorry. And so I used that as a reference for getting you know, you to kind of sit in a lawn chair, right? Um, and and the thing is, is that, like, it would be great to actually get you saved on this list, too. So maybe we'll do some of that today, too. But, like, I, 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 I basically what I'm trying to show here is that I have a lot of characters. I have a lot of things saved. So we're able to pull that up um, just by saving our characters, um, you know, our, the URLs uh, through slash prefer. So that's 
pretty cool. But uh, you know, just just to give a small little, I guess, demo of that. Um, inside of VC Create is where I'm going to be prompting today. I don't know exactly like all the other like ins and outs of it. It was just one of those things that was like, I think I think it was actually Mavis who messaged me and was like, do you, do you know about this? And I'm like, no, what, what is, oh, like it, it just got me really excited uh, because it meant like I didn't have to copy and paste URLs anymore in order to keep my characters right. So that was pretty cool. Let's, let's go with just walk in the beach. Um, and then I, I, I try to include a, uh, a gender because if I inject into like a female form, it, Victor is like very effeminate that way. So let's, let's not do that for now. Walk to the beach, him. And then I add a, his shirt, black shirt, black hair. The, you, you don't have to, uh, you know, this is like a knee jerk thing for me in order to get my character to show back up. Right. But the, the, the reality is, is that I am, um, I'm largely relying on the fact that yeah the, the, it's always a shirt and a ha and hair that's visible in it and it's at the end of my prompt so it doesn't dominate the prompt right but it at least lets me be able to say um uh i need to have these basic things there because we're, we're looking at more than just the silhouette when it comes to and i'll switch this over here on text here there you go <laughs> um so I, I yeah right there's there's a couple here that like and it's of course of course mid journey's making everyone look like a supermodel you know what I mean like it's it's uh, I the the thing is is I learned that well, the last time that we were talking about this and we were like trying to find normal quote unquote normal looking people that's a very problematic <laughs> kind of discussion point um, because like what is normal you know what I mean like what is um, you know, what, what is, what is considered average? What is considered, you know, whatever. So maybe it's like best for mid journeys liabilities, like just to stay with the supermodels, but like, or it's either supermodels or very old wrinkly people. You you don't really get a, uh, it. It's harder to get a median between the two until we start getting into specific genres. Yeah. It, it can be sometimes a bit tough. Uh, it, it style raw helps a lot for that. Right. So if I do the same prompt now with style raw, um, it is, it's more likely that we're going to get less quote unquote finished things. So, um, and then, and then we'll start getting into turbo mode and all the fun, like kind of blasting stuff here. So I don't think I'll be playing my song today. I don't think, uh, just because I couldn't get my audio stuff working, uh, like I wanted to, um, my, my, my voice banana input was missing. So, okay. Yeah. So what we're seeing here is, you know, we're, we're seeing more, what seems like portions of a shot or the assets to a shot as opposed to a completed pretty picture. So if we compare this where it kind of seems like I, I maybe I cropped too close on a, on a photo that I took, right, uh, of a handsome gentleman walking the beach, um, while this, you notice everything is very well cropped. Everything follows a sense of the rule of thirds in a way that reminds me of like a finished photograph, like a finished piece. Um, style raw is more likely to give you usable assets for things while, um, while the regular mid journey is going to kind of give you a nice, pretty finished picture. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, it, 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 that's in my experience, that's, that's the difference there, but I, I, I more than happy to hear your all's opinions and stuff, uh, as we, um, get into here and stuff, especially if I'm like projecting about styles and stuff, feel free to correct me in the chat. Um, but what I want to show you guys here is the injections, okay? So r right now, uh, we got, um, let's, let's do, yeah, let's do this one here. Um, the thing is, is that we can inject any art style we want, and then within painting, we can actually inject into portions of the frame as well. And I won't be getting too much into that because today's, you know, focus will be on filmmaking. The, in terms of the, uh, uh, the, the injections here, because you guys need to understand how this works before I get into the filmmaking side, okay? So I'm gonna hit variation subtle, and then I am going to write one of my saved characters here, which is Victor's 70s. And Victor from the 70s is styled in a, as a Kubrick film, okay? So in terms of the lighting of the character, it may not make a lot of sense, um, but what's gonna happen here and it, there's always a chance it flubs up too. You know, you, you gotta, you may, you may have to run a couple times. Um, 
And I'm going to do one on strong as well, just so you guys can see that. Strong is going to get rid of the beach a bit here. Um, but essentially what we're, what we're doing here is we are providing a template by giving these URLs into word-only prompts, okay? So um, this is my method. This is my workflow. It's not, there's other ways to do this too. But I use, I'd use all my direction with word-only prompts. And then once I am happy with the composition, I'm happy with like a general form of things, I will then inject Victor into it. So let's take a look at, um, at these results here. So on the, on, the subtle, on the subtle injection here, and I'm actually gonna move this over. On the subtle injection, what we immediately notice is the form, like there's continuity of the location. There's continuity of the character's pose, but nothing is the same. Like if I zoom in a bit here, um, the face is always different and it doesn't necessarily give us a, um, a level of control or, or recognize. I don't recognize I, any of these as live action Victor at all, actually. Subtle in terms of doing the filmmaking stuff is probably not going to work nearly as well as variation strong will for what we'll get into next. So if I now close this here and get rid of this, boop, okay. Um, if I now get into variation strong, however, that is that is certainly 1970s Victor um, with uh, curly hair and and just walking the beach. The poses always change with variation strong, but you'll get a lot more continuity with your character art. And just so you guys can see what the character art looks like as well, um, this is Victor as a live action character. Um, and you know, there's always gonna be some changes, but each one of these URLs are in an order that really promotes the character's continuity. So you could see that I had a zoom in, or sorry, a full body turnaround and, 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 a, and a solid pose at the beginning. And then at the end, I have a close up in order to encourage sometimes close ups inside of my prompts. And this close up is styled after The Shining, actually. I needed, or sorry, not The Shining, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey in order to get the, the lighting of the eyes and all that. That's basically the, the ship from 2001. <laughs> um, you know, so I'm injecting that into my prompts in order to retain character continuity. And when we get into filmmaking particularly, um, this is really where um, where it comes in, like, you know, where, where you're able to say, hey, I have a quote unquote actor within my prompts now. I can direct this character in my prompts. Um, and by by doing so, you know, you, you end up in a place where you're able to say, hey, oh, wait, wait, wait. What if I could direct them like a movie, right? What, it, like, sorry, my phone's blowing up. Let me go ahead and uh, mute that real quick. Do not disturb for at least an hour, please. Okay, there we go. All right, so the thing is, is that um, I only gave very loose instruction for this. What we need to do is we need to start putting on our director hat and we need to start thinking like filmmakers, okay? The, after a bit of an explanation of this stuff in terms of injecting into prompts and doing all that kind of thing, what you all, if you scroll down on the left side here, there is a section that is called under introduction to latent space, right? That's called live action filmmaking. And this skips all the comic book stuff that skips all of the, um, the 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 kind of drawn aesthetic. A lot of the Niji stuff is not inside the live action, obviously. Um, and I'll mute myself really quick so I can show you guys. Uh, inside of this section here, I show you guys how to do the same thing I did with the with the anime styles with live action characters. Um, there is a a bit of a cheat code here that I can that I can, I can put in here, and I'm gonna do this inside of um, VC Create real quick. Um, it's called DVD screen grab, and it's my favorite prompt to make fake movies. Um, I'll hit this on here. So uh, I'm gonna use DVD screen grab, and now uh, and, and in the chat real quick, I wanna I wanna hear from y'all. Um, if if there's any particular movies that you wanna see, 
like us kind of like do an attempt on. You know what I mean? Uh, we can we can check that out here. So let's do uh, let's do Princess Bride. I'm very curious what that's gonna give us because it's gonna be a it's gonna be a lot of princesses and brides and have no relation to the movie necessarily. I I don't believe quoted text works in Mid Journey. Like I can't quote Princess Bride right, and it staves that as like a singular thing. I I don't think that's how that works. So we're just gonna what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna find the year of the movie. Okay. So uh, I will go ahead and open Chrome here. And we'll find Princess Bride and get an exact year. I think it was 88. Um, 87! I was one year off! Ha ha! Ha I'm good at this. All right, okay. So, uh, 1987. You can also go to the... You can also go to the wiki entry. This this makes me feel old, by the way. Like, uh, anyway, anyway. Um, so, we're going to hit DVD screen grab, Princess Bride. And then, um, and then we're going to set an aspect ratio to kind of look like a movie. So, AR 16.9. And then after we kind of explore this concept film and see where the repetitions are, we'll start using negative prompts to remove the repetitions. OK, I'm going to put this on um, <laughs> it's on turbo mode, which means I'm going to render things a lot faster than you all are going to be used to seeing. OK, so if you're inside of VC create, you're going to see basically the storyboards for maybe a movie get made like all in a couple of seconds. So that should be cool to see. Um, but I'm going to put repeat on 10. And what this does is it's going to throw you a warning. It's going to say, are you sure you want to do this? Because this, this is going to take a big chunk out of your fast hours. Okay. Um, and it's like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, sure. And that's it. You really should check with, uh, with the slash info. If you write slash info, it'll tell you how much is on your account. Okay. There the, here it comes. Here they all come. Um, and, uh, I personally love, um, this, this prompt because DVD screen grab is going to effectively look at the back of the box of like millions of DVDs and go, Oh, th so that's what a movie looks like. You know, at least that's, that's how I think of it. And so, um, we get a lot of what you would assume, uh, which is a lot of the lady looking at it, like looking at him, you know what I mean? It's a lot of a blonde woman. <laughs> looking at the at the husbando uh of of uh you know here but we get a couple standouts and the standouts are always interesting to me like um you know like he is not um just just the idea of like modern sunglasses in a in a medieval film just is like really funny to me uh this would totally be a victor moment if we were going to invade princess bride right like let's Oh, let, let, let's let's see what happens here if I try to cast Victor inside of this shot right here. Um, I'm going to first use my anime Victor because I usually get good results merging the two here. Um, but I'll also I'll also do it in subtle just so we can see what it looks like. It's probably not going to look like him. Um, but what's more likely going to look like him and change the composition at the same time uh, is going to be doing Victor 70s because that's my live action one that I have here right now. So I'm going to use that one. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, yeah, you can see that it changed the composition heavily, but we have basically the same thing in Spirit, right? Where it's like kind of trying to combine 70s Kubrick and Princess Bride. So we're talking about like, you know, a, a, a generation and a half difference in filmmaking. Um, and it, it, it really just, in terms of the differences between these, you can see there's a lot of cutoffs and stuff. I'll have to like square off and zoom out for a lot of these. But... This is how we can say, okay, I like this. I like that it's this composition here, but um, you know, uh, with with subtle strong. I'm sorry, with with a uh, variation um, subtle. You notice we actually keep almost all of that continuity, and that continuity is super important for the next step here because that continuity means that you can start to like have the characters dynamically move and change. But ever since in painting, I haven't needed to use it. Okay, so like uh, in terms of like uh, like if I wanted to make him talking, right, then I would just do variation region and grab his face like that. Uh, the thing is, is that this is not enough information to make a believable face. You always want to select way more than what you think because think about it, y'all. If you're talking, your jaw's moving, right? Your jaw. Your, not only is your jaw moving. But the skin underneath your jaw is stretching. Your neck is moving 
and 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 you know changing in size to to let air in and out of your throat when you're talking. So instead of just selecting the mouth, we actually need to select a much larger area of this. Now this only works sometimes, like it's not a guarantee, and we're most likely going to get a couple a couple of bad takes here. But um, in the start of my prompt, at the very front of it, I'll just write, um, uh, you know, some sort. Of, I don't say like mouth moving because no no one thinks of a mouth moving. They think of like, oh look, he's talking, or oh he's yammering on, or whatever. Think about words like that. Um, so like a good one for me is negotiating. So negotiate negotiating there. Okay. And then I leave that as its own, you know, put a comma there or whatever. But the reason being is that um I have a suspicion that it's gonna look at a bunch of prompts of people negotiating and it's like them all bickering at each other, right? And so um the uh that tends to show people with mouths open. You can also use things like yelling, screaming, whatever, but you're more likely to get some pretty horror show stuff uh out of that um and uh with in painting i'm re-rolling a ton i am really trying to get the result that i want out of that but uh if we just kind of zoom in here really quick look at that he's talking there we got his mouth open right there so we could be like whoa man what are you doing you know i know i loved i love the mustache like this is so freaking funny to me but that's all within painting, right? So like we just use prompt lol, look at that. Pretty lipstick. But yeah, like it's a uh, it's amazing what you can do within painting now. You know, like uh, I'm going to upres that one just cuz I want that saved in my library. It's too funny. Um but uh it, essentially what we can see here though is that when I uh when I injected the anime version of Victor into this, this is where you get the styles of my comics, okay? So my comics are me taking live action prompts and then injecting my anime characters into them. Okay. So um the uh they tend to look really muddled, like they tend to look really like odd, right? And I'll redraw over their faces to give their faces uh form. But this is how I uh, I tend to create my like we're gonna make anime real kind of argument uh, <laughs> uh, is by combining the two with Mid Journey. Um, this one I like a lot actually. I think it's kind of a, a Henry. It's a way too Henry Cavill. That I I have a V chin, not a not a Henry Cavill chin. But um, but yeah, it's a uh, it is interesting to see um, these sort of combos here. But uh, in terms of the chat, though, I'm going to jump back over here. Yeah, I love deep eye sockets like like that's it just it gives me such a great like canvas to work with where it's just like here are these like I can make tiny little dots with my pen and suddenly the character looks like they're going to be like intensely staring at a character. You know what I mean? Like or whatever. It, yeah. For doing any of the Jonan Vasquez style, like, you know, like. Oh God, everything is like elongated forms and stuff. Yeah, I I I do that a lot. Gattaca? Okay, yeah, Gattaca. Uh yeah, there you go. That's that's awesome. Um listen, you know what? Because I know never ending story gives us amazing results, right? I, I'm gonna get into the negative prompts on never ending story. Um episode four of my comic series Beyond the Valley actually focuses on never ending story as like a kind of an ending plot point to it. Um, because I do consider um there there's 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 an artist who i i i, I really I, for the sake of his reputation too i really don't want to say his name and stuff like that but he has a character that is the combination of the hustle and the grind of working in entertainment and um that character is really really awesome i really like the personification of something that i absolutely hated when i worked in hollywood that hustle grind is awful um, you rush to like work, uh, like to get a job somewhere. You just like get stressed out about it, trying to get it. And then once you get the job, right. Uh, you know, you got a couple months working on it, but then as soon as you're at like the latter half of it, all your coworkers suddenly are now your competition for your next job. So hustle grind, it's awful. And so I use never ending story as a reference to the hustle grind, because I consider that to be the never ending struggle for comic artists online. Um, you know, just they, they, they're, it, they'll never be able to keep up the hustle grind. It almost, it almost seems like, uh, uh, like, uh, I don't know, like a Miami vice kind of, um, 
uh, let's, yeah, I got buddy comedy, right? Yeah, hustle grind, like hustle and grind. It's kind of like hustle and flow at that point, but yeah, hustle and grind. Uh, but okay, I'm gonna do never ending story. And then um, what I'm also going to do is style raw just to see what it looks like for our first couple. Uh, because we might be able to get some like usable assets out of that that we can then turn into character sheets. Okay. Because that's this is really where I use the DVD screen grab the most is to explore like my film ideas. Okay. And that lets me then find characters that I may want to like expand on through that process and then I'll create a live action character sheet and I'll get into the live action character sheets here in a little bit, but um, we're going to do this one real quick. I'm just going to do this without doing repeat first, just to see if I need to apply any negative prompts right off the bat. Um, the, for example, whenever I did the Holy mountain ones, my negative prompt was for the word priest, just because every time everything, any reference to the word holy is going to evoke religious imagery, right? So unholy is the same thing. It'll evoke dark religion, like black black capes and black priests and stuff like that, black coated priests. And so, yeah, I, I was like, I don't want that. I don't want every image that I have to have a priest in it. So I did a negative weight on priests. Um, but we can see here, uh, no surprise, that it's a character with a giant animal. You know what I mean? Um, but we can use, uh, you know, uh, different uh, you know, prompts, at least, uh, sorry, different prompt codes in order to kind of encourage diversity, including weird, uh, and chaos. Chaos will most likely make it not look like never ending story. It will make it very, um, very different, but let's do weird really quick just to see if I'm able to get some, uh, um, get some diversity in these panels The you see, when I'm doing a prompt like this, I'm largely trying to understand what sort of repetitions we get out of it. Like, what is reliable? Because oftentimes I'm looking, I'm looking for the odd stuff. I'm looking for the stuff that isn't reliable, that isn't that that stands out, right? So I'm gonna do uh, a weird by I don't know, like 500, something like that. Um, it's got like snakes now. We got it's like it's like never ending story with a snake, but snake. Um, let's do 16.9 on the aspect ratio and, uh, and see if we get anything that doesn't show the, you know, like the actual Falcor inspired thing. Um, and, uh, we can just kind of see there chaos, what causes the images to be more different from each other. The thing about chaos is that it also makes it not look like a DVD or a movie anymore. Uh, pretty quick. Um, like if I put a chaos of five in here. We're going to see just how little it takes in order for everything to not look like a movie anymore. So let's do chaos of five. Um, you could do up to like 100, I think. And like, I'll just say right now that it's it's almost pointless to run prompts at that unless you're literally just trying to get the uh, results to be like super, super divergent to where your words don't really matter anymore. Um, yeah, but you can see here that um, with chaos, uh, it still looks like a film that might be in the right time period, right? And we're getting some uh, some fun angles here. But what, what what we're not really seeing here, though, is um, is direction at all, really. Even with a little bit of chaos mixed in there, it's still it's still there's just there's not really a lot of unique direction in here. OK, so uh, instead of just kind of like rolling the same prompt and re-rolling and re-rolling and re-rolling, Instead, we can start to make our um, our film here, but I'm going to try to um, give us just just because I have access to Turbo, so I'm going to use it. Uh, we're going to see what Never Ending Story is um, with. Uh, let's do a repeat of ten here, and then the idea here is that if we if we do get some fun diversity in these results, right? Which we won't. We won't get a ton in this one, but if we do get some fun diversity, um, we'll be able to uh, kind of expand. Oh, I didn't change the aspect ratio. Darn. Um, hold on. Let me let me let me let me let me change that real quick. It's if I wasn't on if I if I was on my regular account and did this, I'd be so angry at myself that I ran 10, 10 prompts in, in, a, in an expensive turbo mode uh, with the wrong aspect ratio. That would have bothered me because every one of these I would have had to go back and then expand and zoom and actually recreate them. But you notice how it's almost all the same thing. 
it's almost all what you would imagine is a giant character like basically whatever whatever you would think is the first thing you think of when you think of never ending story right so um you know it, it, it in terms of getting like true diversity out of this um like i i tend to just kind of throw things at the wall and see what sticks in terms of negative prompts okay so like um and i'll get into some of the questions here about uh the, I'll get into some of the questions that are that are here in a bit, but um, so like I'll say, uh, let's do first aspect ratio sixty nine, and then uh, oh by the way I could see what Leafy said here, huh? I guess I still don't understand how these things work as well as I thought. I don't understand how these things work half the time. I'm I'm mostly just kind of giving you my experiences. I am a product of failure multiple times over. Okay. So um, the only reason that I've been able to do what I can do is because I have a filmmaking and entertainment background. Um, this is a particularly hard prompt for me to do the, the actual tutorial in only because never ending story is always going to produce two people. OK, it's going to produce the creature and the person. OK, so we can use negative prompts now to try to remove the people, to try to remove the creature and see what sort of results we get from that. Um, so, uh, young Timothy Chalamet, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, if I if I now come into here, and let's just do negative weight, no. So you, it, it, negative weights are really easy. You just, you just add um, a hyphen hyphen the no, and then uh, write whatever you want to not see in your prompt after that, okay? So um, let's do... Uh, Let's just do because we we you know almost all the shots of never ending story focus on the boy that's in it so I don't really want to do like a negative on the child right but let's do negative on creature and see what we get out of that um and see if that's enough just to get us to start breaking away from this repetition um by rerolling enough you can you can effectively you know start to see certain patterns and those patterns are what you want to use your negative prompts on right. Oh, look at that. So, yeah, we're, we're suddenly, you know, suddenly we get now shots of never ending story with the princess girl as opposed to the creature. Right. So let's try this again. But well, essentially what we're finding here, what we're trying to find here is what is the middle ground? Like what is the what is the prompt that's going to create a um, a usable randomness that looks like never ending story? OK, um, so uh, now what we're going to do is say and then. Let's uh, let's get let's uh let's do no princess as well. Let's just let's let's see what it let's see what it does to uh and there's a point where you go too far. You can't have more negative prompts than positive prompts, right? Um it it it's a math problem. Uh <laughs> um but at least lets us be able to start to see other characters, diversity within our channeling, where where exactly the story might be able to go just from a you know quick sort of overview but i now have a father figure i now have a uh, a female character and i have the lead and the creature okay so um yeah and feel free to prompt feel free to both prompt and upres and you know whatever you guys want to do on these feel free um especially if you got if you're like oh i wish he would just do this Please just do it, like do it and then show it to me because I want to see it. Um, we were originally going to do, I really, I'm kind of disappointed in myself that I didn't get the audio stuff working. I was just really stressed out with the started today. Um, the, uh, the, there's a song that I wanted to do like a big, like riff out with you guys, but maybe I will save that for the next time. Um, but that, uh, the word, the word was going to be banana. So, um, yeah, uh, there is, you know, trending silly banana prompts and stuff, but we'll, we'll kind of get into this first. I feel like this is a prequel to that. So let's, let's, uh, let's get into this. Um, the, you'll, you'll immediately notice that what we, uh, up beta, I haven't actually tried up beta a lot yet. Um, but the, uh, the main thing that we want to see here is, is there any of these characters that we want to keep? Okay. Like, do we want to do we want to be able to say, I really like I really like this lead actor. I really like these two characters right here. What would it take to make them continuous? Right. 
Um, and very similarly to my to my anime stuff here, it's the same workflow. Like the only thing you need to do is save out the face and the hair basically as its own image and then start injecting that into prompts. OK, so for me, what I did for a series called Chrome Lords, which um, I'm I, I, my first live action one, um, I wanted to make a 19 uh, a 1980s uh, schlock action film. That was the goal. I was like, OK, I want it to feel like I I went to the, you know, the V the defunct VHS store that doesn't, you know, the blockbuster that the, the knockoff blockbuster that doesn't exist anymore. I wanted to go inside there, go on the shelf and grab whatever was the crappiest looking VHS tape I could find. Um, and it's probably an action film and it probably has terrible acting in it. Uh, that's what I was aiming for with this um, when it comes to like action schlock from that time period. So I was aiming for um, a 1980s action film gunfight Roboman. That was the prompt that I used here. And you notice I never actually mentioned a property here. One of the things that I was kind of like, you know, alluding to here with this is that if we use a property like never ending story, like Princess Bride, like all those, it refers to the movie, sure, but it's also looking at the words that you typed. It's also going like, okay, so we have to have a princess. We have to have a bride. We have to have, uh, we, you know, and you might even get a couple of books in the background because never ending story, story book, like that kind of logic, right? So uh, instead, instead of going, hey, let's, uh, what is it? Let's, uh, you know, try to remake a movie, right? Like I did with uh, with Victor for um, for episode six, I was you know basing it off of Kubrick films. Instead, we are going to do a genre, and a genre is going to give us the results that we actually want for making a movie. Okay, so like for example, I'm going to go in here, and I'm actually going to copy my prompt from my tutorial here, but instead of um, Instead of 80s, I want you guys to give me a genre, like a genre of um, uh, of of film or entertainment. Just like you know, like I gave you gritty 80s action film, just as a as a starting point. But instead of a specific film, and I might, yeah, yeah, we can do westerns. That sounds fun. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of spaghetti. Uh, unfortunately, like, like the, the linkages over Western and spaghetti are extremely strong. Um, <laughs> right, right. 1950s Western, 1980s schlock action film. Nailed it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, satire, noir. Yeah. Um, so, you know, noir might work. Uh, it's definitely going to make things really, really, really dark, obviously, but it's also going to like kind of delve us into, um, uh, like, you know, some portraitures and photography as well. So that might not work as well. Uh, 1930s expressionism. That's what I haven't done before. So I'm going to, I'm actually just going to copy that one right off the bat. And we're going to mess with that real quick here. Um, the, the, and we'll, we'll get into a couple of them because I have a feeling that we'll, we'll hit a couple dead ends here and that's normal. Um, sci-fi rom-com yeah right if it's a rom if you write rom-com in there i'm guaranteeing it's just tons of prompts of a lady and a dude uh this prompt here so dvd screen grab and 1930s expressionism is what we're putting in there so let's go ahead and grab that and expressionist film and instead of saying expressionism right because that's going to evoke more more diversity i'm going to say specifically an expressionist film and see what we get uh out of that and get rid of robo men and gunfighting even though it probably would be really funny to see a 1930s expressionist film about robot men um i uh i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of keep it a bit basic here uh also true that the aspect ratio i've noticed affecting a lot more when it comes to these kind of prompts OK, so like for the time period, they wouldn't have had 16, nine or three, two aspect ratio. They would have had, you know, four, three or one, one um, more likely. But look at this. We suddenly have a complete, you know, alterization of like what we were getting from before. Instead of saying, hey, 
we want to uh, let's let's actually do the repeat right off the bat because I, I I already like that we're getting not only different characters but different angles, different different things that are happening here. So let's see if we keep getting just a lady in the frame for it, and we might need to do a negative prompt on on her just to see. But with repeat, I can now run this at scale <laughs> and. Um, uh, oh, by the way, I, I need to mention too. I, I know that when I linked one of my streams, I linked I linked a I linked a portion of one of these mid journey streams inside of my like explaining how I do things to the comic crowd. Um, I think it was the AI comics video that made them panic, honestly, um, because I in with one button with repeat, you know, we made forty comics in one in one run. You know what I mean? But um. Now take a look at this. We're getting some really interesting results out of this. Like I really like this one. I'm gonna upraise that one. Um, you know, uh, I I really like um, Metropolis. Metropolis is such an amazing looking movie, uh, especially for the time period. Um, but we can start to build a movie out of just these frames. But you notice that they're always gonna feature like the actress in it, right? And that's common because if you think about movies and film, you're pretty much staring at a person the whole, almost the whole time, except for like uh, the establishing shots. And we'll get into that here in a minute. But um, let's try to enforce some diversity first before we start directing. OK, I love this. I love, love, love this result right here. That is amazing. Um, and if we, you know, we could do variation strong and subtle of that if we wanted to explore it a bit more. But um, the. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is first we're going to run it in uh, in raw because raw is going to give us like what what uh, what's being propped here by Jorsky here. Um, the uh, the raw is going to give us more like I got a frame of it as opposed to I I'm looking at the back of the box of the DVD. Right. So um, at least that's the logic I use when I'm trying to do this stuff. Um, the. Uh, yeah, cool. So we we don't really see a ton of diversity from doing raw, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. But what I am going to do is I'm going to run a negative prompt on uh, on what I'm seeing repeating. So let's do her first, just to see a, 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 a simple pronoun, just a simple pronoun, if that will be enough to change the diversity of the uh, of the shots we're getting here. And again, you know, we're not directing yet. Not at all. I haven't given it any direction whatsoever. I'm just trying to explore a genre of film. And look at that. Oh, my. Oh, my. Like, we're already getting into some awesome stuff here um, uh, in terms of, like, world building. Uh, this is some amazing world building material here. Uh, and it's just from using a simple pronoun. Like, I just don't want a lady in it. You know what I mean? Her. Um, so we're going to run this one a bunch. I'm going to I'm going to do this one a bunch because I'm loving the 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 kind of worlds that I'm seeing right here. So this gives you an idea of how I make my like my films for uh for doing video later. OK, so uh, let's do repeat of 10 on that. And uh, I know I don't need to apologize for this ancient, but I'm running. I'm going to run a lot of repeats today because it's a uh, it's a uh, <laughs> it's a uh, it's my favorite thing is we can just print a movie. OK. Awesome. So what I want you all to do now is because the diversity is much higher at this point, we're getting some really interesting stuff here. I want you guys not only to up res your favorites inside of VC Create, but I also want you all to uh, to start exploring these worlds. Um, if you're seeing a pattern that I am not seeing, right? Like I just used her for my negative prompt on here. If you're seeing a pattern that I'm not seeing, like maybe like certain things about like the witchier elements to this, like, you know, headdresses or, um, you know, uh, uh, even like horror, like if you did a negative prompt on horror, you're probably going to get a lot less spooky stuff like this is awesome. Like this is like like, you know, they're about to like dive into the water, but they're about to like smack into each other. Like it's just it, everything's wrong. Like there's some wrongness to this that I really like. Um and uh and yeah so we're we're getting a lot of really interesting stuff even like a negative prompt on stripes might be really interesting uh you know just just things like that i want you guys to play around with it 
and uh, and see if we can build an ex- a 1930s expressionist film like together like we can make this film together uh because later on we're gonna animate it we're gonna make it move and it's gonna be weird uh i'm gonna love it um so uh and and here's here's the thing okay for for the ones for the ones that uh kind of look like victor i'm i'm just gonna get immediately throw them in there real quick just because it's it's gonna be funny for me to see uh hey hey there's a little this there's there's this me hanging out and this is the kind of stuff where you can like start to like cast you know your characters into it is because you you see somebody that kind of reminds you of that person like maybe they have the same hair color maybe they have the same sort of shape or whatever and you can start to be like is subtle enough like is subtle enough for me to actually inject this character into there and for this one like you know it's it's definitely it's definitely getting for some of the joker kind of stuff like yeah i know it's like there's some there's some clown clown stuff going on here but it's real funny and victor's kind of a clown you know what i mean like he's kind of an oddball but like it's oh i love the industrialism i love i love industrialism applied to this actually that should probably be one of the establishing shots so yeah okay cool this is like metropolis on 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 crack honestly i'm loving it um so uh let's let's go ahead and uh start to build the film itself right because the thing is is right now what you're seeing here is randomness right it's just it's just trying to make it work and then we use negative prompts to kind of say hey i i want to make it even more random or i want to make it even more diverse um i gotta up that third one here um but what we're mostly looking for here is inspiration okay like ideas for other other stuff so like for me anyway when i'm looking at it like i'm really liking some of the stripe stuff that we're seeing here again industrialism seems really interesting to explore um there's there's definitely some like cult like behavior I'm seeing in some of the uh, in some of the imagery here too, so we might be able to play with that. But the first thing I want to show you guys is on direction is film lenses like camera lenses. We need to start using camera lenses in order to direct the film, right? And if we have a prompt like for example for my Chrome Lords piece here, uh, I literally just rerolled. 80s action prompt until I found a dude that looked like that had the like right hair and everything else that was matching my character and I just injected into a similar looking character so you, you can see that's what I did here I went and then just threw that in there um depending on how patient you are you can you can really go real far with this right um but what I'm gonna do is I am going to go into uh the prompt here you know, her definitely gave us some into like as a negative prompt is on her. But at the start of the prompt, I'm going to do um, let's do a establishing shot. Inside of the tutorial, you're going to see. Uh, there is a list of film terms that you can actually get it dig into as well. Uh, and I don't know exactly where it is right now, but inside of here somewhere <laughs> is a glossary of generic film terms. Everything from low angle, high angle, cowboy, all that, all these kind of fil common film terms are there. Uh, and you'll be able to use them. So for establishing shot, DVD screen grab, 1930s expressionist film, this is what we got. And that is an establishing shot. That is the very first shot that you would see, usually, by the way, establishing shots do not have to come first, but establishing shots are shots that establish the world for the audience. They tell the audience, oh, this is a dark, spooky place. This is a place that there might be a, you know, a murderer around the corner. There might be, um, a, you know, just some, some distant place to explore. Um, a lot of establishing shots tend to focus on um you know not just the environment but on important characters in themselves like the the a, a key aspect of world building in general is that everything is a character you know what i mean if your your buildings up here like for example these buildings on the second one up here they they kind of have like a smokestack sort of effect going on here which can evoke you know 
pollution. It could evoke a sense of like despair or the world's broken or that these things shouldn't be the way that they are. Um, the establishing shot lets us be able to say, hey, here's my world. Let's start to explore it, right? So if you like one of these, just hit variation strong or just hit variation subtle without changing anything. Um, variation subtle is going to, you know, keep the same composition. You will not see any diversity in variation subtle when it comes to the, the actual like camera angles, but variation strong, as long as the word establishing shot is in there, right? You will get some diversity. So we're going to come back into here. I'll open up first the variation strong and I'll turn myself off here so you can see. Variation strong is essentially, hey, I moved the camera. <laughs> Uh, I, I moved the camera over to the side, uh, and then we shot it again. So variation strong is how I get multiple camera angles or what in Hollywood we call coverage and coverage basically is just a, a generic term that's used to be like, okay, we covered every possible shot that we could get from this scene. Getting complete coverage is why actors get very burned out doing a hundred takes on something. So with sitcoms, however, a sitcom is is a is shot with multiple cameras. It's a multi-cam setup. So they can get coverage all at the same time. So the actors don't have to keep repeating their acting. Um that's 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 essentially just a little preview of some of the terminologies that we're gonna be digging into here today. Um but in terms of the establishing shot though, you know, um the it's it's amazing what sort of stuff we can get just with that. And then seeing you guys start to diversify some, <laughs> some of these results here is really cool to see in real time. You guys, I mean, honestly, we could make an entire movie doing it this way. Okay. So, um, the, the thing is, is that we're not really, you know, we, we yes, we're, we've started world building. We've, we've started building our environment, the place where we want to be. It's very like, you know, um, do, you know, like, yeah, I won't get into descriptors much. I just really like what you guys are doing. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to up res. Um, yeah, let's let's just go with one of the ones that were up resed here. Let's see here. Um, I'm just going to grab one that gives us a lot of and you can see here that uh, opening credits DVD screen grab by ancient here. It, it literally looks like what you would imagine being like for like the uh, modern opening credits, right? Uh, it's really funny because there would never have been opening credits for uh, like it's it's oh, sorry. No, there would have been opening credits for like a long run of the of the older films. Like they would have been all text telling you who made the film and whatnot. And then the movie starts. But there wouldn't have been like an animated sequence going over that. It would have just been text flowing over like, you know, like uh, 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 showing up in front of the screen for this area of time period. So, um, yeah. Uh, okay. So I guess what I want to get into next though, is that, uh, yeah, you can see you, you've, you've done interiors as well. So like establishing shot interior, there you go. Now you have the living room. Now you have the background. Like now you literally can cycle through every background you could possibly need. And then, you know, in a traditional program like Photoshop or, you know, whatever you can combine them together, but we can start to get into some of the, uh, um, asset creation where we're actually making assets for this stuff you know um so let me go into here and uh what i'm gonna do is i am going to start to direct one of these characters in here okay so i know that i have a negative prompt on her right which is probably going to um kind of fuddle with some things here but uh let's let's go ahead and remove establishing shot and replace it with um let's see here what's a good what's a good one for expressionist 1930s film you got to remember too that if you really want to do this right you got to you got to look into the time period you got to look at what the, what they actually had access to you know what i mean like they wouldn't have had access to rack zooming <laughs> back then you're never going to see a zolly move and a zolly is where you zoom in or zoom out and do the opposite with your um uh with with your with your actual camera so like if you zoom in you're pulling the camera back at the same time 
um, that creates a weird sort of perspective shift that's used to like kind of like oftentimes be like times changing or the world like the world stopped or any of these kind of world breaking things that happen in movies, especially like sci fi and fantasy. They'll use zollies in order to make that effect. Um, but we, what we need to get into here, though, is like some kind of uh, I think like conflict or something like that. Like we need somebody meeting somebody else. So I'm going to do over the shoulder and over the shoulder. What it's going to do is it's going to promote someone in the corner of the frame. Really? At least it should. Um, and in my experience, you have to put the hyphens in it in order for it to work well enough for it to be repeatable here. So um, let's go with the, uh, let's go with that and just see what we get off of that. Again, we're, we're, we're getting some skewed results because we're working with an aspect ratio of three, two, but seeing a modern aspect ratio on a 1930s film is not really too big of a deal. I, I, I am not, I'm not worried about the results of that necessarily, but um, let's look at this over the shoulder here. And you can notice that it doesn't look like an over the shoulder, but it does look like a character's maybe talking to somebody or something shifted to the side. Maybe they're reacting to somebody because that's what an over the shot is. Over the shoulder shot is somebody reacting or talking to somebody. So let's do the third one here. OK. And um, the uh, what we're going to do now is uh, I'm actually just going to pan. And uh, I'm going to see if this is enough because over the shoulder is in there. We'll see if this is enough. If not, we'll put more weight on over the shoulder and see if it creates this kind of like blurred person um, for us to kind of dig into here. What did we get? OK, and I'm seeing OK, I'm seeing you incorporate a bunch of different film uh, over the shoulder, twisted framing, Dutch angle. I uh, This is amazing, by the way, like I do really like these results and stuff. But when you combine multiple film angles, what happens, at least in my experience, is that it tends to like, like, uh, be like this like twisted like I I I I took a blowtorch to my camera lens, <laughs> and uh, and warped the heck out of it. You know what I mean? Like, um, it's uh, it is interesting the results you can get out of it though. I'm loving these spooky places you guys are picking though. Like, there is some really cool, spooky places. So. The thing is, is that you really do want to be pretty specific about the camera angles that you're picking. You know what I mean? Because like, there's a reason why you pick those camera angles. You're not just like, you know, going, "Hey, I need a, a close up or whatever." Um, you're doing a close up because you want to really invest in the character's face for a moment in time. You really want the audience to know, okay, there, this is an emotional scene. Even though somebody is yelling at them, whoever the number one problem that editors get wrong when they're getting started with filmmaking is they always cut to whoever's talking. And that is the worst way to do editing. What you want to do is you want to have somebody have like um, you, you want to make sure that whoever the camera is focused on is the person who's most important for that particular moment of the frame, like that particular moment of the film. If 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 the emotional baggage that's being taken from someone yelling at somebody it probably is on the person who's getting yelled at who's seen on camera as opposed to the person who's yelling like that that kind of stuff right so we could see here with over the shoulder we didn't really get what we wanted we got we got her which is interesting because we put a negative prompt on her um so i will say uh whatever time you guys do take into these i am going to double back after the stream is done and save them right it's it's I love the results to see that, that you guys are making here and we can start to really build these worlds. You know what I mean? Like this character walking here, any 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 result where the shot is like off from center where the feature set is like, you know, balanced in that way. I really like that. I, I honestly if there was a way that I could force into one of the quadrants, like one of the rule thirds. To have the feature set focus on that, that would be amazing. Yeah, and I'll any one of the ones without color, just for the sake of keeping on 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 brand for what we're doing here today. I'm going to avoid clicking the color ones for now. L let me let me actually pull up what a standard over the shoulder looks like. Over the shoulder shot. We might even have to add the word shot in there. The thing is about over the shoulder shots is that the one of the reasons why they're particularly hard to do with Mid Journey is because 
they are uh it's 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 largely an uninteresting thing like it's at least at least in my opinion because the results we got here there's no blurred figure there's nothing like that but what it does do though is it gives us the room to add it later so like i can go into photoshop and add a blurred silhouette of a shoulder right to compensate for this you know i could even take this one from this picture i'm not going to but um you could you, there's a lot of solutions for this but what it what it does do is kind of promote that angle that camera angle of of it so i will move on from over the shoulder but i do want to encourage just just you guys to kind of experiment here with different camera angles and such um and we'll get into directing after that because now that you know that you can not only pick a genre of film and start like creating all sorts of like you know styled like things that kind of look like those the films from that era you can do a lot more um particularly to provide you know context and the way i do that is i am going to grab one of these here like that and then i am i have to put the negative prompt put me prompt back on her real quick no her and here's the thing okay um let's actually give some direction here in terms of what the characters are doing what are they going to be conflicting with like what 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 exactly is so what i want you guys to do is inside of uh vc uh text here what i want you guys to do is i want you to tell me who the villain is like you know not not with a picture but i want you to tell me who you think the villain is of this story like who 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 would be who who would be fun to either cast as a person or um you know and i i really don't like using proper names and people and whatnot but i really want to see um at least like like a motivating factor like what is the villain's uh goal here the boogeyman yeah at yeah boogeyman that would be funny actually the 1930s expressionist boogeyman um but let, let, I'm going to give you guys a minute to do that here, and I'm going to take a sip of my drink here. Just a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and uh, if you just do film film term glossary, you'll you'll get that. Um, but I I I I do I I do want to um. Uh, I do want to make one note here, which is the naturalist who threatens the industrial future made me laugh when I was taking my drink, and uh, I, like you made me choke up for a second, so I was like. <laughs> I, I need to that's why it took me a second to regain my composure um that's funny um let's let's uh so um i want to see what a naturalist looks like inside of this sort of prompt here just really quick because because it made me laugh i'm gonna look at that and then we'll we'll prompt a couple of them and and i, I do encourage that you guys if you don't see me pick your prompts just prompt them yourself inside of vc create so that i can look at them later and we can always, by the way, on the over the shoulder, we could also in paint the, the the blurred, you know, silhouette. But I'm I'm gonna worry about that later. I I just I just want to see what we can do to get a villain here. Okay, so uh, let's do uh, a a naturalist walks into a corporate boardroom, and this is probably going to start mixing eras right because like a corporate boardroom is going to probably evoke stuff that's in color right um but we might be able to start to lean this result in a way that's like you know um you know interesting but let's so we have our corporate boardroom here let me let me mute this here we have the corporate boardroom uh i do like the giant clock it does remind me of of some some interesting uh films of that era where it's just like because they knew that some people's projectors were not going to be like completely, you know, uh, crystal clean film. Like it was like everything has to be bigger because it's uh, it's easier to see on camera. Um, but we can uh, now kind of come in and say, OK, let's have someone entering this room. OK, uh, and then we'll crop that all together at the end. So um, come into here. And we will go back into prompting again and instead of saying a naturalist walks into the, a boardroom because we know that the results gave us the boardroom right we need uh uh and a naturalist is probably not gonna give us the exact 
uh, imagery we might be thinking of what a naturist would look like. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make this a uh, a bit more. Uh, so we're gonna say uh, opening a double door, opening the double door, and then I'm going to put the character ahead of that. Uh, what is it? Brandon Mack did the right thing. He actually got ahead of me on this one. He uh, he put naturalist ahead of everyone else. A black and white behind a naturalist looking at a corporate boardroom. DVD screen grab expressionist film 1930s AR32 C15. You got this with chaos. Awesome. No sitcom. Wow. Okay. So this might be our holy grail like uh, answer here for this. Uh, you you might have unlocked the code for this one here. Um, let's let's go ahead and I'm actually going to upres all of these just to kind of put emphasis on this really quick here because uh, Brandon knocked it out with this one. He understood that the goal of this isn't necessarily to uh, to always say I want a DVD, right? The goal is to put priority on things. I'll put my turn myself on here. Okay, the goal of this here is actually to put priority. Uh, ahead of the DVD screen grab because now we start to dictate exactly what dominates the composition. I am in love with this one. Let me actually mute myself here because this is important. Uh, there is some really cool looking stuff that's here, right? Like the like it, 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 they're all kind of looking at like the screen here. Like this, this is not a screen; it's a painting, but it could be a screen. It wouldn't make sense for the time period, but uh, we could easily now go to very region here, grab that face, like that head that's here, and do like, um, you know, uh, I don't know, um, uh, like the Obey logo or something like that and see if we start to get more brutalist. Let's do brutalist as well. So um, if you use like film, oh, sorry, not film, if you use like art styles, particularly like I, I think brutalism works the best for this era, uh, even though it doesn't match this era. It looks a lot like it in terms of like the intensity of it. So we might get some interesting results out of doing that. But uh, I just, I, yeah, right. Yeah, just big old blocks. Um, but the the thing is about this is that as we were to like in paint and change minor things about it, we may not get what we want, but we start to see like what sort of stuff it promotes. Okay. So like with the obey logo, um, it like, it tried to do the text for it. And we have the one face in the middle here, which is kind of funny. It's kind of like a bit of a monkey face here. Uh, but it's, uh, it, you get the idea here is that we're essentially going to in paint the, um, the continuity back in, to a lot of these frames. And this is a lot more efficient than how it is in my tutorial right now. And the reason being is my tutorial is for doing animation. And what we're doing right now is we're doing storyboarding. We're trying to build up a film in pieces. Um, I won't be getting into film writing today because frankly, I'm not a writer and I would love to be able to bring in a writer who can like be able to on the fly create dynamic conversations and stuff like that. Uh, we're having a dynamic conversation. That's all I can keep up with is just us talking. So uh, <laughs> uh, in the future, we'll be sure to bring in a couple people uh, and see if they they probably don't want to talk about exactly what they do uh, or what projects they're working on right now. But um, they uh, they're going to be very much excited. A lot of them are on strike now, too. So it's uh, it's it, they, they're available. I might be able to wrangle a couple of them in for a stream here. Uh, just because even just getting honest reactions, if people don't like generative stuff, I'm a pretty okay with it because I'm like, look, even if you don't like it, I just want you to know what's possible right now. You know what I mean? So like I try to kind of tote that line a little bit, but um, you could see just some of the results that you guys are making here are just amazing. Like uh, uh, the Greg Tolan style DVD screen grab. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and, and, and that's going to start evoking the composition, you know what I mean? Because you're, you're, you're evoking some, a particular director style, you know, or a particular artist style. And what that's going to do is yes, it's going to get you a lot closer to what you were thinking when it comes to like, I want to make this kind of movie. Right. But what it also is going to do is going to get really, really close to plagiarism in, 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 in a, in a uh, very abstract, weird, undefined way, um, the because like I can prompt a Miyazaki film right now 
and you get something that looks a lot like a Miyazaki film. But as soon as I like crop that all together and, and make it and, and produce it, I can upload it to YouTube and maybe get a couple people to see it. But if I wanted to take that to a film studio like Cannes or something like, or let's start not studio. If I want to take that to a film festival, oh, I'll get torn apart. I would get destroyed uh, because they're like, you're not doing an homage. You're clearly just trying to copy that director. Um, so like, it's important to, with intention, use artists and directors' names in order to be like, I specifically want to do an homage to, you know, um, Metropolis or whatever. You, you know, you have a robot lady walking out at the very similar composition as it is in Metropolis. An example like that would be um, would be an homage. But um, I'm loving these like action, like running away from or like, you know, there's there's bullets flying at him. And he has to dodge. That's awesome. Uh, these these will all be very useful for building our film. But what's also like kind of amazing for this particular prompt, I didn't realize when we started this. Right. A significant number of these films from this era, it's actually really hard to tell who the actor like lead actors are because they're all wearing the same garb. Like they're all wearing the same suit and usually the same hat. Like they'll be very, it's, since it was all black and white too, you couldn't tell the color diversity in their vests and stuff like that. And there wasn't a lot back then either, but yeah. Yeah. So what that means is we could actually take full advantage of that to be like, okay, this guy is now running or this guy is now doing whatever because the, you know, we're always going to expect some man in a suit. Right. So yeah, I'm. It, it's definitely really interesting. Like, look at this. Like, that's that's just awesome. Uh, to see like 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 this level of like, you know, uh, interest in what he's talking about could be like a passionate political speech or something like that. You know, um, and uh, let's see, what is this prompt here? Nineteen. There you go. Nineteen. There you go. A nineteen thirties naturalist. Okay, perfect. So uh, now that we know that we can get the old man using. You know, this prompt from Throttwaddle, which, by the way, it's good to see you again, Throttwaddle. I only remember your name, honestly, because, like, the first time I said it, I was like, I was like, there is a million ways I could say your name wrong that would get me in trouble. So, like, uh, I was like, yay. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and use that for our boardroom pitch here real quick. So um, let's see here. So uh, I'm going to grab some of the results that we saw from from earlier so let me see here so what i'm going to do is we we know that the naturalist works well let's do let's grab all of uh brandon's prompt here as well and copy and paste that so we get like the no sitcom and all that stuff um and we will then take out some redundancy so we have a 1930s uh, you know and i'm i i i We'll keep the we'll keep the Kodak camera in there. I it tends to prompt cameras when we go too long in this, in my opinion. But we'll see what happens. Uh, okay, all right. Let's just go ahead and run that and see what we get. But to kind of go through some of your all's results here, this this reminds me of like you know they wouldn't have been able to do this kind of compositing back then. But this reminds me of oil on lens. There's there's a bunch of films where if you wanted to create space back in the day. Right. If you wanted to create like uh, some kind of like just just in general, some kind of like uh, moltenness like but you couldn't really like shoot magma because magma like if you went to a volcano with a 1930s camera, <laughs> you would just melt everything. All the film would be destroyed. Everything would just start falling apart because of the heat. So in order to recreate some of that stuff, what a lot of times they did is they just poured oil on the lenses and they would like murky, make everything murky and blurry. So like when you see like uh, someone falling into a dream sequence, you know what I mean? It was usually some guy coming over with some vegetable oil or, you know, whatever or animal fat and just slapping that on the lens and going, look, you're all you're, you're, wave your arms around. You're going through a portal. You know what I mean? Like that's that's how they did it back then. But here we go here. We got the naturalist now. So. Uh, uh, there's some there's there's some uh, funny results here. Um, now the naturalist, you know, is is it's it's bleeding out of the air a little bit. I do like I do like this one, the fourth one, but I am going to try to get the double doors now to prompt completely on here. So let's uh let's do. This almost seems like a to to kill a mockingbird. You know what I mean? Like uh, a courtroom sort of thing. Um, 
So let's see here. Uh, uh, bursting open the double door, the double doors, and then we'll just see what that gets us. Again, almost all of my prompting style like is just put more words ahead of the thing that I liked. Um, it's, 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 it, especially when I'm doing image prompting, I'll just be like, okay, I need my character to suddenly be doing this. I will just do a variation strong and then add those words to the front or variation subtle. Subtle tends to give less reliable results for that. But, um, let's take a look at bursting through the door and we actually did get him going through a door. Um, but we probably want to run this prompt a couple times and I'm also going to run it under raw and see if we can get something a little bit more usable out of that. Uh, and then I'm going to hop over back to chat and we'll see what you guys think of all this. Um, let's do style raw. So just, just to kind of go through the bursting of the door really quick, we did actually get the character um, doing uh, like a bit of a pose, like walking in sort of pose. So he's like, what up bees? Like, you know, like uh, let, let's, uh, let's, yeah, yeah. It's like, what up, what up my guys? Like whatever. And it's just like, you know, if he's the naturalist who's coming in here, who's going to be like, you know, kind of disrupting the event, this is way too happy of a walk for him. Um, you know what I mean? But it, it, it could also be that we could now in paint, get in here. Whoop. But I'm going to do uh, corporate boardroom door and then leave the rest of it for now and see what it gets us. I will say that when a good trick that I've learned is that sometimes adding chaos can be helpful for things inside of in painting, particularly, but also removing it helps to, a lot, too. So, like, if you're just really, really sick of the results you're getting, like all your in paints aren't kind of coming out the way you want them to. You could change the, you know, the actual like where your selection, but the, in my opinion, what actually works way better is just to kind of change the codes at the end of your, your prompts. Um, so we could see here that we got, you know, uh, barring the last panel here, uh, we, we got, we got what could be like a, a, like a literal board on the wall that could say the company business name on it. And that's a great way to establish that the character doesn't really belong there because it's like, you know, he's late to the meeting or he's not, he's you know, whatever. But you could at least establish what the business is. Like you could say the big oil, you know, right here or something like that. And it would be enough information to people to understand it so that none of the characters have to talk about oil in order to, you know, convey that in, bit of information. Uh, visual storytelling is what I what I'm so excited about with generative imagery, because we can get inspired by not just the visual or sort of not just like the context of these images, but by the visual languages that are being communicated here. So that the more you guys start digging into this stuff, right? The more you guys are going to start learning about how to become film directors, the more like uh, it's so much more easier than, than any other of the sort of prompting uh, skills that you would get than most of the others. I, I mean, what I mean by that is, um, is whenever you're doing like animation or comics or anything like that, you're going to need like a drawing tablet. You're going to need like all sorts of other stuff, different programs that kind of composite it all together. But you can just use mid journey for storyboarding. Like you can just use mid journey uh, to get everything you need, uh, you know, including now the in painting stuff. Yeah. You really, you really have all the tools in front of you when it comes to filmmaking, you know, the pre visualization of filmmaking is now entirely done. I, I, okay. Um, I know that I'm about to start at the, uh, I, like I need to start answering questions because otherwise I'm going to go on a tangent about some of my friends here in Hollywood. So I'm going to, I'm going to swap, swap back over. I, I am, I am, I am perfectly, perfectly okay with watching a black and white movie. I, I love watching black and white movies. My parents dreamt in black and white. Um, you know, like they, they, uh, they watched a lot of black and white TV. Uh, so it was, it was a, it, Yeah. I, I, I think that there is lessons to learn just from that in itself. So that's awesome. I'm glad you're here to experience it then. So I, I, I will get into this tutorial as well when it comes to some of the other sort of prompts that have worked well for me. But um, the, really what, it, what, 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 what it, the number one prompt that I use is long shot. Long shot. Um, a long shot is going to give you the best of both worlds when it comes to the establishing. Because here, establishing shot really evokes no people. It's meant to be a world that you let the audience like 
you know, dive into at the start of the film. Sometimes you hold on the establishing shot. Sometimes you don't. It really just depends on the, on the director, but um, a long shot, however, is going to promote shots with characters in them. And that's what you need to actually apply continuity. So like um, the, a lot of times we're, you know, using long shot short, like, like, like these are terms that, that if you look up a film glossary, you're going to find benefit of, but it, it's really the fact that if, of just imagining what sort of imagery it's able to build from, and that's what it's taking. So I, I would recommend that you mess around with long shot, particularly wide angle lens is amazing. It really like, like I don't understand how it's able to wrap things around logically, like the way that it does sometimes, but um, wide angle lens also is like an anthropo, like an, like an anatomical nightmare when it comes to, um, trying to bring the characters farther away from the lens. The close-ups are just a GoPro, but yeah. Anyway, yeah, long shot, mess around with wide angle, but just know that long shot's probably going to be better for you. When you talk about, like, using zoomed for world building, right? So you start with the establishing shot, uh, sort of prompt, and then zoom out. Because the thing about that is that it's going to promote that everything kind of looks like what you zoomed out of, right? So you can basically start to like build an entire panoramic background with zooms and pans. And, um, and, and that will give you all the assets that you need to, 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 to build your own story out of this stuff. Like uh, half the time, I feel like when I come in here, y'all, it's just me going, the word of the day is establishing. And then you guys go nuts. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's fun. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, um, whenever, whenever you're making something traditionally, right. You're never, you, you, this is all very new. The whole prompting uh, entire frames, completed frames of things is a very new thing. But when I say asset creation, I mean that you're making the parts of stuff. You're going to be deleting significant amounts of background and stuff. And I'll actually show you here in here. Um, so I'll just scroll down real quick. Um, yeah. So for example, and I'll mute myself here. This is my animation tutorial where I show you the um, the raw version of my cartoon that was at the top of the of the video here, uh, or sorry, the top of the document here. The thing about this is it's chaos, right? You can't really tell what's going on in it because I haven't isolated her. I haven't turned her into an asset yet. So collecting assets. The collecting assets section lets us be able to basically say piece by piece exactly what I did to recreate the um uh what is it the, the the final product here so it's it's essentially i have all my parts to it and i'll, I'll just kind of scroll past this uh, injection part about different shot angles um but once i have all my assets we start the construction so i have a background plate that's one asset is the background another asset is her it's just cropping her out and i do this on every frame until i get a clean background and a nice running animation out of it. So you see here, that's that's the asset of her, and that's that's her asset applied to the background. So uh, then we actually do a camera, 3D camera, in order to evoke the movement of that, and uh, and then I slow down the time in order to have it fill, and then it, so on and so forth. All this stuff is in the tutorial, but the point is is that these are not individual prompts; they are layered assets that we you know in order to retain the control we need for creative expression yeah um and, and slash describe is really where we're going to start to like break down our favorite shots and be able to understand why you know maybe maybe just a little bit why mid journey picked that specific imagery you know what i mean so like and you know feel free to hit reactions to your your all's favorites or up res or just up res them right but um, it is it is true that um, as as we start to like kind of like dig into this stuff, um, we we really we really can you know at least at least in my opinion we're we're able to find all sorts of like really interesting characters particularly like I love character studies I love it when we can just kind of deep dive into these people um, and I might be kind of tangenting off of off necessarily what you were asking, but I, I, I definitely love anything that kind of makes me go, what's his backstory? Like, what is, the, what are we making? Are, are we suddenly making a 20,000 leagues under the sea remake, you know, in, 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 as an expression, like that kind of, that kind of logic, that kind of thought process 
is like look at this this is the birth of a super villain right here you know what i mean but like it's just so cool looking um lots of great stuff from you guys the uh and i'll i'll, I'll show off one of my uh one of one of my in painted things here that i ended up not using because i i mostly and i'm actually going to switch myself over to the couch here so that i can properly pull this up here um but i came out with a comic today kind of addressing some of the um uh some of the stuff related to my my the recent news on comics and stuff like that and uh i i one of the panels that i did here um the thing about this prompt in particular was i ended up going with the live action one because um what is it because the uh I just really, I just really dug the uh, the kind of hair movement, and it wasn't really confused by what I injected with, which you'll see here in a minute. But this is using um, some animation software to get, you know, to make everything, you know, pop out, and that's what I'm gonna do on your all's prompts with this film expressionist thing. Is later on, we are going, you know, to mess around with some of this stuff. We probably won't have enough time with it to really get into it today, but um, at least to get into the results. But we're gonna make this movie move. We're going to make it look like this. Um, and the, you know, the thing is, is that when I did the injected version of it, which I'm going to pull up here on my discord here, uh, pulled up one of my in paints here. That's the same one, but in painted with an anime face for Victor. OK, so you can you can inject different art styles. If we wanted to make a 1930s expressionist anime, we could do that. You know what I mean? Like just by in painting the faces, right? Like think about that. If we just in painted all the faces and that in any skin and made that animated characters, it would suddenly look like the most advanced anime I have seen in a long time. Uh, at least, at least it, it, in terms of like, like the technical sort of aspects, the shading, the lighting would all be evoking that era. Right. So yeah, I just wanted to show you what that looks like. Um, you could see here that not only do we get the clouds moving up in the sky, but there's shadows from the clouds that are believable, that look like they should be behaving the way they should be. Um, yeah, really, really cool. So we'll be able to do this kind of stuff here with your all's props. Um, I am using a service called Pika Labs on this one, but I mostly wanted to just kind of dive into the actual setup and filmmaking, storyboarding, all that. So we won't be getting into Pika today, um, but it's it, it's it's also, it, this is a mid-journey stream, so I'm gonna, yeah. Um, but yeah, so is there any other questions before I go into another tangent? <laughs> oh, neat. Yeah, no, that's, that is neat. I didn't know any of that. Um, yeah, like, uh, th there's a bunch of like technical, like a lot of people will use like specific cameras, you know what I mean? Like a Kodak, whatever, whatever. And yes, you, you, you'll get shots that look like from that. But the number of times that I've gotten an actual camera inside of my prompt, like the character is always a photographer is like as soon as you recognize the character's pose is in the pose of someone taking a photo you'll be like oh okay the, i gotta put a negative prompt on cameras or uh, lenses or whatever evokes you know uh trying to get away from from that yeah yeah and there's there, there there's more and more of them uh seemingly by the day because i think ai video is going to be the next uh in, you know frontier and obviously everyone's kind of racing for that right now because hollywood's on strike and if you could make a good enough AI video, you're 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 going to be ahead of the game on a lot of stuff right when Hollywood opens back up again. So um, and, 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 and that's the the kind of reality of what we're dealing with here. I, I, I just to answer your question first, before I get into a Hollywood story here, uh, Pika Labs is what I use the most. Right. Uh, it does put a watermark on it, uh, but that's what I use. Um, there's a runway as well, like runway ML um, has a service called Gen 1 and Gen 2 that are uh, also video. But my problem with runway really comes down to the fact of its pricing system. It's really, really expensive. I just don't don't like make, you know, Pika Labs is free. It just puts a watermark on it. So, yeah, and I haven't messed with Kyber myself. So here's here's the thing. Um, uh, at least when it comes to Hollywood right now, right? Um, there, there's a really weird period where a bunch of people are really excited about what's happening, right? Where there's, there's a lot of new tools, a lot of new access, all that stuff, but there's also like no money to be made at it right now. 
Like they're like a lot of the studios are going to be like, yeah, maybe for previs we'll use it, but we won't use it for any studio stuff. I I really do think that there's going to be some standouts that really come. The longer the strike goes on, the more likely that there'll be somebody who's just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to submit this to cans. I'm going to submit this to film festival circuits and see if people actually like it. Uh, Right now, a lot of the AI video stuff is just nonsense. You know what I mean? Like it, it, a lot of it's just look at this character wibbling and wobbling around uh, with eight legs and looking like a spider. Like it's it, a lot of it doesn't make sense right now. But as soon as you do image injection, especially with my mid journey prompts, as soon as you do image injection where you're injecting just like your favorite image from it. Services like Pika Labs stuff suddenly become very useful because you can start to animate assets. Again, talking about collecting assets, the uh, that 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 video with the witch that I made is three different runs combined together, and then using motion smoothing in order to get the clouds to not be stuttery. Um, so that is not just the raw result. I had to actually construct that. You know, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, and I layer it. Yeah, I layered it. So essentially what I did is because I know the results are always going to be the same because we're doing an image injection, right? Or sorry, we're just using an image prompt. Um, the uh, the thing is, is that means that I can keep layering it. I can go, all right, everything works about this, but the clouds aren't moving right. Let me just run another render and then see if I can get the clouds to move dynamically. And it did, you know? Um, it took maybe like eight rerolls in order for me to get what I wanted. Once I Once I got something... To hook on to, I, I I just build off of that. I I I wanna I do wanna say though, um, when it comes to, like, at least the use of uh, a lot of this like AI visual stuff in film right now, um, I think that it's one of those things where no one's really gonna appreciate the amount of work that you put into this right now. Um, they'll just say, oh, it's generated. Like, there's not, like, it's it's one button. That's obviously a misconception. We all know that when you're prompting stuff, it's Right, right. It's a it, it it it's something that is quote unquote fully generated, right? Is rarely rarely that. Mo especially when it gets put into like a production, it's going to have a lot of work done on top of it. It's going to have all sorts of like things that are altered and transformed that makes it a lot closer to the art. Um but I, I, I think everything that we generate, everything that comes out of Midjourney isn't technically art, it's imagery. Right. So like, you know, outside of everything that I've been talking about today, I, tr I try to encourage at least once in every one of my workshops just to call it imagery and not art. Just it, 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 it literally helps so much to do that when you're talking to people. I promise you, like if you just say, look at this image I generated. Is it you're gonna? It's gonna be a lot more palpable, pal palpable for uh, especially uh, hardcore creative folks, people working professionals of 20, 30 years. Uh, just say, just don't say you make it. Don't say it's art. Just say it's an image that you generated, and then suddenly everyone's not angry anymore. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it helps a lot to speak the correct language here. And some of the stuff that we generate, that you guys generate, might might be considered art like it might it might be worthy enough that you simply choosing it is the transformative thing but i i, I guess just for the sake of uh you know of trying to bridge bridge the world a little bit between uh traditional creative you know workflows and and ai stuff i i really do want to promote the idea of of avoiding the word art just because it it, it is artificial in, in in the word as in like it you know we created it right so like it's 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 like it's an art art at that point it's an artificial artificial you know what i mean like it's <laughs> so let's just uh let's just call them images and then everyone's happy um let's see is there any questions well then it's artificial art yeah yeah that's what i call it the other day it's a good reception yeah 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 artificial art works it works i i called um uh, I said it once in my comics that this all this art the turmoil of artificial art. Uh, I, I did use that line once, um, but um, it is art. Yeah, uh, screw what people think who are investing in what. The, yeah, I I will I will say like it it does suck. It does suck to people who are super bitter. I get it. I I get it that when when folks are like super negative about that reaction. Um, 
I the reason I do that though, the reason I try to emphasize this is because language is super important. Like we really need to be able to say what we mean, what we intend. There's a reason why the large language model is better better at communicating than we are. Okay. It's because human language is flawed. It's immensely flawed. Um, just to give you an example that was given to me by the, uh, the language professor of UCSB, uh, Santa Barbara Un uh, University. Um, uh, I, I didn't go to that school, by the way. I, I just, I just, I had a wonderful opportunity to be with, be with that, uh, interview that lady for half a day. But what she told me was, I want you to think about the word mother. How does that make you feel? And, uh, if she's like, if you feel good about it. You're not in the majority, actually. Uh, a lot of a lot of people have negative assertions towards their mothers and fathers or any parental figure. She could have. She's like, I didn't mean to just specifically say mother. I just mean any parent. Um, the negative connotations that are there just from hearing the word mother means that we did not communicate correctly our like our uh, our intention of that. Like basically, what what word. I understood was maybe not the word that she was thinking like in, 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 in the emotional conveyance of, of the, if it was more like she said, uh, Oh, my, 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 my parental guardian or something like that. Some almost condescending term. I would know what she meant. I would know that she didn't like that person or whatever. And the thing is, is like, this is a very simple example, but then she brought me to something called the allosphere, which is in it's Santa Barbara. It's basically like a giant three, like a 360 degree, dome but it's a giant infographic it's ridiculous it's like a, it's it's like a disney park ride and you go in there i have never seen a deep dive into language like that before where it was like diving into an infographic but in 3d and it was all around the word mother like uh, basically every positive negative connotation of it every like she literally typed it in and suddenly we were like diving into like a neuro like a like a neuro uh just yeah just like a brain trying to uh, interpret how other people would it is a simulation system the entire thing was like they were able to simulate evolution in it they were able to simulate other things about it but they were able to simulate how people react to the word mother and oh man it was really it, it just it's more exciting to me than when i'm explaining it now but yeah um language is super important and the reason why this applies to ai stuff is because Right now, the definition of art is changing. It's changing right before us. You know what I mean? Like we we really don't like it's not up to us to decide what what it is or what it isn't. It is up to the general public. It's kind of like when people say, "Oh, you're a millennial." Like we didn't choose to be millennials. You know what I mean? Like millennials was a name given to us after the fact that it was you know a thing. Um, the they they had no idea what to call uh, what to call us when we were actually the age of millennials, you know what I mean? I have young kids and whatnot. So the language evolves, it changes, it grows, it does all that sort of stuff. But when it comes to art in particular, um, I'm more trying to keep civility, you know what I mean? I'm trying to keep like, like it is, it is something that I, 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 it's one of the things that lets me be in creative circles. Okay. Is that I'll be like, Guys, can we can we just can we just see a little bit of middle ground? You know what I mean on this stuff. Like, like uh, I I I don't want to be able to copyright images that come out of Mid Journey. Things like that are just like that's cool, that's fine. Like I I I I, I don't want to copyright that either. But I just I just want to avoid conflict. I want to avoid problematic language and behavior. Uh, and I think that when people um you know, particularly demand that something is something, that's when we start to see conflict, right? Uh, and this applies for even like war and whatnot. Like we, we see all sorts of wars that break out because someone said that something is a certain way when other people disagreed with it. So anyway, I'm going on a tangent. It is evolving. It is changing. Um, for some people, that change will be very impactful. Like they, they'll lose money. I mean, I was a, I did a creative consulting job for years. Um, when chat GPT came out, I was like, Oh no, like this is going to directly affect my creative consulting. And, um, you know, fast forward four months later and I have a 60% drop in clients. You know what I mean? Like it's because people are just using chat GPT for ideas instead of 
consulting with professionals. That's why I kind of deep dived into AI originally when I was making the tutorial was because I was I had a lot of time on my hands. I was like, oh man, like um, this feels like COVID part two, honestly, for me, uh, because like I, 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 I was getting significantly less calls. I was getting significantly less, um, you know, business in general. And, you know, I'm fine, you know, I, I'm okay, but it's, it's definitely one of those things where I was like, oh no, I have, I have to figure out something else. So I started deep diving into AI stuff real hard. Uh, so it's kind of ironic, you know what I mean? Like, you know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I've, 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 I've been doing that sort of thing for years, but when it comes to like AI in particular, I just, I fell in love with it when it came to the actual uh, imagery, like generative imagery. But yeah, um, I, I think that, um, let's see, what is it? 55% body language, 38% tone of voice, and 7% is actual communication. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, y'all. I, I use a VTuber model because, like, like I have a really bad stutter, and my eye my eye line really gets thrown off, right, um, because of it. So, like, people have trouble paying attention to what I'm saying sometimes. Uh, not only that, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a rambler, so it, I, I'll, I'll ramble. Um, but because of that, the V2 makes me easier to consume. Um, it makes me less, uh, less distracting. I'll put it that way. Um, technology has an acceptance curve for sure. I'm sure the first guy who bought and drove a car through the small horse driven town felt weird. Hi this is from hip hypnosis. Um, I know when I first got a laptop in the late 90s, when they were still rare, I felt weird using it in public. The thing is, art is supposed to be different, and it's supposed to challenge people? For sure. For sure. Um, by, by the way, the laptop story is funny. My, my mother with her, her, with her um, Toshiba, uh, in the, you know, Toshiba with the Windows 95 on it or whatever, I, I, I still remember that thing fondly. That thing was like a, 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 a damn murder murder weapon because it was so so rigid and and, and durable um but uh but no when you're talking about specifically um you know kind of feeling weird and whatnot um i don't really feel weird necessarily whenever i'm doing generous especially when i'm talking to people in real life about it um i feel a lot weirder when i'm talking to industry people um these are people who have been sold a kind of boogeyman story about generative imagery, you know, and uh, I, I I just the only thing I can really do is just be like, let me show you what I did with it. You know what I mean? And, and that that helps a lot. But it's it, it really just comes down to misconceptions of photo bashing, really. Um, you know, people have known Photoshop for <laughs> 36 years now something like that um they know what a photo bash looks like they know what it looks like when you slap two photos together that don't belong with each other um we and anyone here that is generating stuff is fully aware that we're not photo bashing right now like we are we can sometimes recreate a photo bash look but we're not photo bashing we're creating entire people you know what i mean we are creating entire worlds uh that are at least in some way continuous as in like their styles continuous or their, you know, their, their, the, the film grain is continuous, whatever it ends up being. There's always some element of like, you know, um, originality that comes out of it. So it is, it is interesting. Um, I, I liked your comparison though, of walking into a coffee shop with a laptop in the nineties. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I felt this when Photoshop first came out, I'll tell you guys a story about this. Cause I, I'm, I'm, I, I, uh, I, I'll be honest, I don't have a ton left in terms of like the, the, the filmmaking stuff, because most of it is going to involve me having to get into um, the actual like, like, you know, film direction of like latent space and stuff. And we'll get into that a bit. But I, I, wa I mostly wanted to emphasize, though, the on, on that I, I, I can't I can't not tell this story if someone brings up uh, Photoshop bashing. Um, all right. So I w I uh, uh, I was I was 17, okay, and I walked into a print shop, like a screen printing shop in my hometown before I moved to Los Angeles. Um, and I had a portfolio ready because they were like, "Look, we're gonna need people with art experience," and I was like, "All right, cool, I'll bring in my portfolio." And uh, I showed I showed him my stuff, and he goes through and he starts thumbing through, and he goes, "Hey, this this one here." 
is is uh what did you do on this one and i was just like well i i went into photoshop and i applied a threshold on the outline there and then i and then i drew on top of it and he goes but that's not real and i was like what do you mean and he's like but that's not real like you didn't actually make this you got to tell people that this isn't real and i was like what do you mean like i i i I drew on top of it. I printed it out for you. It's real. You know what I mean? Like, and he was like, no, this is, this is fake art. It's the, the first time. And the, uh, yeah, it was the first time I ever heard that the phrase fake art in my life. Right. He's like, no, this is fake art. The fact that you didn't label this as Photoshop means that you're not a professional and I don't want you working with me. And he did that for no reason other than to break me down to make me feel like a crappy person. It, 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 it's been, it's been way too long at this point, but understand that w this is the sort of, you know, like, like I, 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 I was, I was broken after that discussion because not only did I feel like I shouldn't be making art the way I was doing it, but that I was doing something wrong. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was really, I, I took the photo out of my portfolio and ripped it. I was so frustrated. Um, now granted it was digital, so I could just reprint it again. But you know, the, the, the point is, is that like, I, I, I was very frustrated, um, with the attitude, you know what I mean? Because it was, it was condescension. It was, it was a, uh, not only that, it was also a blissful ignorance. He completely ignored me saying I drew over it and just said, because the only thing I wanted was hard, dark lines on my outlines. That's all. I didn't want to have to draw that. So I just darkened the outlines on it. And that was enough to disqualify my entire portfolio of traditional work. So, you know, this is a little bit of a heat of warning. You probably should have two portfolios if you are a traditional artist. You should probably have one that includes generative stuff and one that doesn't because you're going to basically show the generative one later as opposed to the one, uh, you know, that you're introducing yourself with. But um, a lot a lot of these people don't, they like, even, like they, they're, they have some sense of power over you, right? The, either in the job interview, that is everyone's like opportunity to suddenly feel power over somebody, right? Like, uh, and and the thing is, is that I didn't have that growing up with social media, right? My social media was MySpace, and that was at the end of my high school. And so the thing is, is that like, at least for me, social media has made this so much worse, like so so much worse where there's a sense of elitism and uh, like to the point where, you know, like when, when, when the boycotts against me started happening and whatnot, I was just flashing back to that, to that asshole who, um, who told me my art was fake. And uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to let people know to keep making it like to keep making however you want to make is important. Um, I, I I didn't wish that I ripped the picture, but I'm glad I did because it taught me something. It taught me that I I really I really do need to control myself a little better. And that was me at 17. You know what I mean? Like like that 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 is that is a, a good good age to learn that lesson. I'm grateful we're talking about this. Uh, uh, thank you, Princess. Is it possible to change industries into the AI imagery or AI field without a previous experience? Uh, I'm not too sure about that, man. I, I really, I really don't know. I'm an independent guy now. I, I, I just the only thing I know is that I get hassled online for doing the stuff I do, and, uh, <laughs> and when it comes to like the professional fields, I'm not too familiar, not anymore anyway. Um, I wonder if prolific painters of their day would diss the first early photographers that are making portraits and landscapes. Oh, absolutely. Um, there were there are painters that felt like there was no more reason to buy oil anymore. Um, like it was amazing, actually. Uh, it's it's part of the whole Luddaism, right? Like where it's just like, OK, well, fine. I, I, like if this new technology is going to ruin everything, they flip the tables. You know what I mean? Like I like I get it. I get it. It's an anger. It's a it's a it's a really, really big frustration to go. Everything that I've, you know, honed my skills on is now irrelevant. Um, that sucks. That sucks. But it's also true that it's not irrelevant. That's just an emotional reaction. And it's most likely wrong. You know what I mean? Like almost all of the of the, of the big players who who attacked me and tried to boycott me over on Reddit. I'll tell you right now, all 
like every one of them, right? Just needs to sit down with me for freaking 10 minutes. That's all it takes. If you just talk to me like a human being, instead of immediately project whatever dumb ideas in your head, then yes, then yes, I, I can fix that. I can fix that for you. But the problem is, is that I am so frustrated with these people now in general that I just called them dumb before we even started talking about it. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's, there's an emotional element that's happening here. And I, I, the reactiveness is what we need to acknowledge first. We need to acknowledge that being reactive is the problem, not, not the actual generative stuff, not the stuff that I'm doing. It's your, it's everyone's dumb reactions that are, that are the problem here. So yeah, yeah, exactly. You just be like, oh, you're so pretty. Uh, like, uh, it, yeah, you know, it, 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 honestly, honestly, it is one of the most wonderful insults that I had heard from one of my husband, one of my friends. Um, uh 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 wives like what basically what happened was he got he got tricked into uh giving money to a spammer all right like to the to, to a scam uh thing over the phone it was like eight hundred dollars he thought it was an emergency or whatever and it needed to get paid so he gave eight hundred dollars over the phone and his wife when you're learning about all this stuff and him desperately trying to get the like the money amount canceled and stuff she just looks at him and goes you're so pretty <laughs> And I just thought that was the most wonderful insult. Like, I love you, but you're so pretty. Like, that's just, that's, that's basically saying, like, you, you've got nothing left except your looks, kid. Like, I love that insult. It is so, it is so, without knowing the context of it, it's not condescending at all. But yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah, her himbo. Uh, yeah. Um, but I, 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 I definitely, I definitely like that one. But, um. Yeah, I feel like I can only go independent. I wouldn't say that. I, I I would say that if you only go generative, yes. Like if you're if you're only doing generative stuff, you gotta make sure that everyone knows that you're doing generative stuff, and that's like your thing. Um, just because like that that would that would get you in some trouble if you try to apply it at regular jobs and be like, yeah, but I need to prompt this first in order to in order to get this thing for you. Yeah, that's that's that that's gonna be very awkward in a job place. Um, but, uh, in, 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 reality though, at least, at least when it comes to doing this stuff, uh, independently, I, I would heavily recommend trying tons of stuff as opposed to one thing really hard. Like you kind of want to have like a bunch of small websites instead of one website just to see which one sticks. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, I had victorgnarly.com, but I also had three other websites that were all kind of themed similarly but it was entirely so that i could hit de different demographics you try out a bunch of things and see what sticks so uh can i get a cheat sheet of camera angles i can actually probably pull one up for you really quick hold on this one's very direct so you don't really have to worry about uh doing anything all right so victor thank you so much this has been a great seminar and workshop thank you so much i learned a lot much love Keep doing what you're doing. Change the rules of the game. Don't think for a second that AI won't be in every film at, a, at, at some level here on Zoom. You are 100 percent right. Uh, it is it the idea that film that AI will not be in film is is laughable. Um, it's laughable because I know visual effects artists right now that are like retroactively working on stuff that they've already finished with AI and going this looks better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like they're they're like going like okay all right nine months ago. I had to finish a composite where like a character is running at the screen, right? He's just kind of jutting around, moving, moving, moving. And the thing is, is the camera shake looks weird. Like it's just, we couldn't really track the motion with the character with the character's shoulders very well. But now I can prompt a new thing in the background, put it into a, a AI video and say, shaky camera, man running, and then put the pose of the guy in there in order to kind of evoke the pose and the AI figures that out way better than me working with, you know, keyframe toggles and stuff. It, it's like, like understand that the main reason why it's better is because there's no barrier of communication. There's no UI in between the, the AI and the output of what you're making. Whenever I had to make something, I'm fiddling with sliders. I'm fiddling with keyframes. I'm fiddling with little individual nodules of some sort. The AI doesn't have to do any of that. Yeah, nodules. Yeah. Uh, the, the AI doesn't have to do anything anything at all Like when it comes to that. It might simulate some of it, 
but it's not actually doing it, which means that the time that it takes to do it or the inc the inconsistencies that come from doing messing with UI is uh is completely negated. And that's where you see the most benefit for sure. It's just it's, we we are human beings that are actually not designed to work with digital information, even though we designed it for us. Like we designed the keyboard specifically so that we can put our hands down and have it, you know, have every key accessible, right? Yeah, it doesn't have to do that. It could just write it for you. It doesn't have to worry about where its placement of the fingers are. And oops, I made an error there because I accidentally typed two zeros instead of one. That's these these are just not problems anymore because of that, you know. So that's huge. Um, but yeah, I linked the film glossaries in there. This is literally just from Rice University, so it's like very, very direct. It's just an immediate, whoop, you know, full list. Um, but it lets you understand at least some of the kind of odd names that are that are in there, like cowboy and other things like that, that may result in weird stuff. Like understand most of these uh, glossary terms here need to be reinforced with negative weights. Okay, so like if I come in here and I say um, you know, uh, like a cross cutting shot, which is in the alternating of shots from two sequences, often in different locations to suggest the sequences are taking place simultaneously. This doesn't actually evoke anything that we can use for AI because that's an editing thing. This should, this should get you started at least. It, it, if anything, you can find other terms. Like for example, a Dutch angle is not in here. And that's because a Dutch angle is not considered politically correct anymore to say. Um, Yes, yes, it, it is. It is how everyone says it. Trust me, that's that. I, I, I worked in the town long enough. Is there something other than Photoshop that I can learn as I currently don't use it or other platforms? I do a lot of rendering. What's your opinion on Adobe Firefly? OK. Um, OK, Adobe, Adobe Firefly. Um, I messed around with it a little bit. The thing is, is that like at least at least for me, Adobe Firefly looks like clip art for me. Um, I really, I really like it. If anything, it encourages the photo bashing kind of presumption about AI. Honestly, I think Adobe neuters their AI because they don't want their customers to run away. Um, they, they, they want, they want to be able to say, no, 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 no. You still have to make the art. Uh, you know, like, like, like they, they, they want to kind of find some sort of middle ground there. And with the, at least with Photoshop beta, which is where I use most of the generous stuff from them. Uh, it's small things. It's me taking a, a bad highlight and going over that. It's me taking a bad outline and highlighting the whole outline and telling it to generate a new outline for a character. That's very, very, very useful. Um, but when you tell it to like do a large scene, suddenly you see all the, the chaos and the mess and the oversampling and everything like that. Um, Adobe Firefly way ain't much better, <laughs> in my opinion, but that's that's just me. Maybe it's gotten better. Um, I did a personal AI versus Photoshop correction speed test of Jen of a fantasy castle using inpitting and very region. I got to say MJ held up speed wise when it, when having to fix all little details, 2% of the things here and there that needed fixing. Um, so, uh, here's what I'll say on that. I'll use Photoshop beta when I need to make really small changes, when I need to like make just a couple quick tweaks here or whatever, maybe add a finger on a character or something like that. Then I'll use Photoshop beta. The thing is, is that mid journey is going to be if you're able to in paint within mid journey, especially on larger elements of the canvas, you're far more likely to get better results because you're using the same brain, you're using the same machine mind that's uh, that's doing it. You know what I mean? Like the, the AI is just the at least in my experience, um, if if you rely on the same creative engine to kind of conceptualize more and more of your canvas then th it means that there's consistency, there's congruency to it that you wouldn't necessarily see if I, because I see all sorts of weird issues that I get from bringing stuff into Photoshop beta. Like if I'll, I'll mid journey one thing and then expand the canvas in Photoshop and there's two different art styles now, you know what I mean? One of them is Photoshop beta and one of them is mid journey's art style. And I feel like now, especially with 3D characters, like, like Pixar style characters, I can tell a mid journey image faster than anything else. For some reason, it's the 3D that it's the fake uncanny valley 3D stuff that really sells it to me. That I'm like, oh, okay, this is one step above that, and it's the AI side. So <laughs> I don't know what it is. There's some weird something weird going on there.
Uh, Visual Technique Library website I found I discovered recently. Let me check it out. I'll make sure that I go into Couch here real quick so that I don't get in trouble in case that's a, a risque link here. Eye candy. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's cool. So, oh, wow. Okay, yeah, this is actually pretty cool. I'll open this up then. Um, okay, so this is like a, an immediate... Like, this is way better of a website, actually. Um, thank you for sharing this. Uh, this lets us be able to immediately see what sort of, you know, language is used to describe visual medium in film, right? What is a silhouette? Yeah, this is great. What is a slit scan? Um, you know, like, all, all of these kind of things are important to to know but at the same time this is kind of mixing both the aesthetic sheets and the shot sheets like like there's 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 an element of aesthetics that's being um being mentioned here by the way this is the zolly thing i was telling you about earlier seven more minutes guys so feel free to ask any last minute questions and uh we'll we'll get them covered here <laughs> oh yeah the, 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 in in film we had all sorts of like uh like hey you're you got your five minutes left or you got like a couple minutes left or wrap it up wrap it up kind of thing uh v6 is going to have a wider knowledge base can't wait it should expand on the overall range of looks uh man i i'm, I'm stoked for that i'm i'm curious to see just how much uh improvement uh particularly for filmmaking i think that they're when you add context when you add like a wider base for things, we can hopefully get more interesting films made out of it too. Uh, Photopea is even better than Photoshop for me, the person who asked what can be used instead of Photoshop. Okay, Photopea, huh, I haven't used that one. I will learn, like something I learned, by the way, was that like, this, the here, I'm gonna switch, turn myself on here, okay. Yeah, nice. Nice. Yeah, I, I should probably check that. I should actually probably leave this screen up behind me when I talk. That's actually pretty cool. It almost feels like the Matrix, right? You know, where it's like staring at a bunch of screens. When I left Hollywood, I would say everyone had an Adobe account. Just about everybody had access to some Adobe program, maybe on a disk or, um, you know, starting the subscription models and stuff like that. I think they just started the subscriptions when I left Hollywood. Um the the number of people who do not use Photoshop or have never used Photoshop and work in the professional business is shocking to me now, like absolutely shocking. Um, because Photoshop and Illustrator were like staples, like you know, like like you the, you could not go to school and not use Illustrator, like that's just not a thing. And now I don't know, like it's very field specific. Uh, in entertainment and film, you'll always like if you're an editor, you're probably gonna have to learn Avid. Right. But Final Cut Pro completely destroyed Adobe Premiere um, in terms of like its general use by indie users. And I didn't realize that the same thing happened to graphics in, in, in a way where all these competitors, particularly like um, uh, uh, Color Rom, I forgot what this is, one of them that's very, very popular. I had no idea just how much of the market shifted away after their subscription models really started. Like when people were like, you know what, screw this. I'm going to just use whatever program I can, I can find. I, 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 I was talking to the girl that I was, uh, that I did the collab with on Reddit. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll just tell you right now that um, she does all of her comics on her phone. Like the, the she's, she's a massive car cartoon, like cartooning uh, comic artist but draws everything on her phone. Like, that's amazing. Um, yeah, the it, it's changed a lot since uh, since my days, that's for sure. Are you interested in AI 3D modeling? If so, how could you use it? Okay, all right, all right, all right. I mostly want to use it with 3D printers, honestly. Um, if I could say, hey, get me a duck, and it prints me a duck, I would be very happy to see that duck. Um, just, just because, just because I knew that that wasn't a design from like a, a, any individual person, it just deduced what a duck looks like and gave me a 3d model. Um, when you're talking about 3d modeling functional, functionally, like ret, like retro engineering or anything like that, I'll tell you right now that I, I think that the AI stuff's a little too early on that. Um, retro engineering is a very, very like precision based thing. So if you say, Hey, design me a part for my car, then what's going to happen is that part is just going to not match any of the specifications of your car because you need to actually go out there with a digital caliper and measure 
the shape and distortion that the car part has had and all sorts of stuff. I'm a little familiar, but it, it is something that I've, I, 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 I think AI 3D modeling is going to be more for video games than anything else. You know, um, it's going to be people going, hey, I want to play a game where I'm the duck. You know what I mean? Just something like that. And you, suddenly it generates a 3D model of a duck for you to be. Um, let's see. The phone screens with pens are very handy now for editing. Yeah, I bet. I bet styluses are essential. So um, the uh, what I will say here is, is there a forum that appreciates using mid-journey with famous contemporary artists? Now I don't see people recognizing anything but Van Gogh or modern surrealists like Dolly as seen here. Um, okay. All right. So in terms of like forums and stuff, I know we got two minutes. So um, in terms of like forums and, and groups and online stuff and whatnot, I highly recommend checking out Lemmy. Uh, particularly lemmy.world. Um, I'll just, I, actually, I really shouldn't open that up because I have no idea what's the top results from lemmy.world right now. But the reason why I recommend, and I'll just actually post it here instead. Let's do that. So if I, it's a Reddit alternative, right? But it's really good for generative stuff because, because it doesn't have the hate mobs uh, there. Um, you have a lot of different groups that are doing generative stuff and just don't believe the numbers. Any of the upvote counts only count for people who are on that server, but it's a federated thing. So that means that the entire Fediverse can, uh, see your content. I've had a comic that on Reddit got maybe a thousand upvotes, right? And I got, uh, 10, maybe 12,000 views on that or something, maybe a little more, but on Lemmy. That post stayed up for four days and got like like 60 or 80,000 views because there wasn't just people being crappy about it and and just like enjoying it. So I would recommend that. Uh, Adobe Fresco. I'm not too familiar with that. Sorry. Um, I have three. I have three 3D printers. I have I, I have seven. <laughs> uh, I, I will admit I have seven printers, but I have sold them uh, or are in the process of selling them now because I just don't have time to use them anymore. Um, I, I I got a little obsessed there for a while before AI, honestly. Um, and then, uh, yeah, buy that girl a tablet. Yes, I'm like, oh God, please, please let me, please let me just get you a Wacom or, or a basic computer, but I don't have any money for that. So I'm just going to give it to you in spirit. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, awesome. Awesome. Well guys, I, I'm going to close this out. Uh, it's seven o'clock and I want to make sure that AC can get some food in him and, uh, and it's just, just, yeah, yeah. And get some food in me too. I really do need to get a burger or something, but I, I really do appreciate all the time that you guys have been spending with me. You can go to my website, website, uh, or my YouTube channel. If you want to see like the history of these streams and stuff, um, the, the YouTube channel, uh, just search Victor gnarly. Um, that YouTube channel is going to have everything that we've talked about. So if any part of this stuff confuses you, especially about character continuity, I have everything up on there. You could just dive into that as you want. Um, and, uh, the streams get better as they keep going, by the way. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. And Tanik, thank you so much for joining. I'm just going to kind of read off a couple of people here. Um, the, uh, it's it's uh hi yeah hip hypnosis thank you so much Brandon thank you I really appreciate you guys like this this is this is great to see all this stuff that we've been making in V Secret feel free to keep making by the way if you keep making I'll probably find time after my burger <laughs> to uh to start saving some stuff so make sure you save your favorites in VC Create uh and thank you Becky uh and uh, uh let's see here Lindsay uh, Thank you. Thank you guys. I just, I just really appreciate all the hearts and all the attention. And, uh, especially with the Reddit boycott thing that happened all of a sudden, uh, seeing, you know, I recognize one or two of your all's names. I, I really appreciate you guys, uh, speaking out for me. Okay. Uh, just be nice to them. Even if they're nice, if you know, even if they're mean to me, I just ask you to be nice to them because I would rather put more good in this world than bad. And they're full of bad right now. So, um, no reason to feed more of it, you know? Awesome. Awesome. Well, you guys have a good night. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kinky and AC for hosting me and, uh, and I'll see you and I, I, I'll be out next week. I actually, uh, my mother's in town, so, um, I will be in the following week from that. Okay. All right. Well, I'll let you guys go. Uh, you all have a good night. Thank you so much.